It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, our 19th anniversary episode, and a big show it is. We brought everybody in studio to celebrate. Jason Howell is here. Is Aunt Pruitt over in the corner? Micah Sargent is here. Abrar Alhidi from CNET is here. Lots to talk about. Section 702 of the surveillance law has been re-upped. What does it mean for us? TikTok the ban. It looks like it's going to happen this time. Elon Musk says, please pay me my $56 billion and we'll say hello to the new Atlas as we say goodbye to the old robot. All that and more coming up next on Twit. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit. This Week in Tech, episode 976. Recorded Sunday, April 21st, 2024. Serial Churners. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Celebrating our 19th anniversary today. Hello, everybody. We're celebrating with a great live studio audience. Thank you for Hello. coming from all yeah. over the, the country and Canada. And with an entirely in-studio team uh, t panel today. It's so great. Look who's back. Jason Howell Hi. has, has consigned, consented to come back. He is now, his new title is the Tech Sploder. Tech Sploder! <laughs> yeah. I, lo I love that name. Anyways, I, I was on a dog walk, uh, I don't know how many months ago, and that name popped in my head. And it was one of those moments, I'm sure y'all have probably had a similar moment where you're like, that's totally like, like that URL does not already exist. Somebody already Nobody has that. Tech Sploder. Nobody had it. I was like, it sounds like Exploder, but with tech, like that's so obvious. It was like one of the only times that that's ever worked for me. Aww. Every other time somebody had it. And here's the, it. here's the tease, the open for Tech Jason Sploder. Jason technology podcaster of oh, nearly this is 20 the, years. So this is for the now podcast. The if you're oh, no, no, no. Where's the, where's the supercut? Yeah, it, it's the other one. It's the hello. This one? Yeah. See, no, uh, I, uh, I love that you're... You can tell I already watched right. it. My name is Jason Howell, and this is... Tech. 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 See if you can name tech. all these people. Tech. 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 Fast. Tech. 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 Tech News Weekly uh, yeah. every, every Feels month. like I see him in person all the time. Yeah. <laughs> first time, yeah. It's so great to be here. Thank you for including me. I feel honored, honestly. So it's thank you for having me. It's great to have you. <laughs> and uh, Micah Sargent, who is Hello. also, you all know Micah. You know me. Tech News Weekly. <laughs> I know you. Ask the tech guys and all that. I appreciate you. And all that jazz. Spending the whole day. And sitting <laughs> off in the corner is Aunt Pruitt, who is taking pictures for all of us. <laughs> With a green hat on instead of an orange hat. Yeah, where's your Clemson hat, man? It's all about the ducks now. Oh, suddenly he's a duckster. Oh, mm -hmm. now I understand. <laughs> all right, well, we should probably talk about tech news. I guess that's why we have gathered here. Although I have to point out, Macintosh, Macintosh, yeah. Macintosh. Yeah. One of these things is not like the other, though. I'm running on Linux, just, just so you know. I mean, we wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> it makes sense. I like to go to the terminal, as you, as you might know. Uh, let's talk about a couple of stories uh, we covered already on Ask the Tech Guys, but I think are uh, pretty big stories. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has kind of clarified the situation uh, with regard to fingerprint and face recognition on your phone. Uh, the, 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 the case... Uh, which was on appeal, is the United States versus Jeremy Travis Payne. Uh, Payne was a California parolee who was stopped by the California Highway Patrol in 2021. Uh, and the CHP officer 
quote, forcibly used Payne's thumb to unlock his phone. So the question to the court was, is that a violation of his Fifth Amendment rights against uh, unreasonable siege, se search and seizure? Um, Payne's Fifth Amendment claim, I'm reading from Ars Technica, rests entirely on whether the use of his thumb implicitly related certain facts to officers such that he can avail himself of the privilege against self-incrimination. So, and there's some history with this, but oddly enough, the Supreme Court has yet to rule on this. Mm -hmm. So this is the highest court yet that has ruled on this. And the idea is that uh, police can't come into your house and say, unlock your safe. Mm -hmm. Because that's something in your brain. And the, and the Fifth Amendment has been deemed to protect stuff you, you know in your head. Well, your safe's not in your brain. Your uh, your pat your uh, what your, do you call your past that? combination your combination. Thank you very much. Oh, your combination. The okay. younger brain prevails. Combination uh, is in your brain, so okay. they can't say unlock that safe. Mm. And there are if many a key cases exists. Can they compel you to use it? Oh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, probably, but I don't know. I don't know if that what the court, what the case law is on that. Yeah. The the you know the opposite is the police can compel you to be fingerprinted when you're arrested, yep. right? They can take a hair for DNA sample. So those are presumed not to testify against you. That's just something, uh, you know, physical. Uh, there's no cognitive exertion. Love this term. <laughs> I love that term. <laughs> Placing it firmly in the same category as a blood draw or fingerprint taking at booking. They can compel you to do that. Mm -hmm. So the question was, I mean, we all know our smartphones have our lives in there right now. Yeah. Right? And of course, that's why Deeply police personal. want yeah. you to unlock it. Mm -hmm. Because they know there's probably evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, and th that's the thing is, we, the whole idea is that what's in here is yours, right? And that you cannot be compelled to incriminate yourself. And we have increasingly made these devices an external uh, storage for what's in here. This is like a second brain and we talk about the second brain, right? And that is where I do fall on the side of feeling that uh, compelling someone to unlock their device and therefore incriminate themselves if there's evidence on that device. I don't know because we, we've kind of as a society uh, put like I've got my health records in here. I've got you know we've got our banks. We've got uh, private every place notes. you've gone. Every place mm -hmm. I've gone, it's all there. And in in the same way that you know I could probably recount some of the places that I've been in, in the past week. That that idea that the police can say, okay, you have to unlock this so that I can get access to something that is part of what would normally be up here. Now, you want your brain to really hurt? The Ninth Circuit panel also said, quote, its opinion should not be read to extend to all instances <laughs> where biometric is used to unlock an electronic device. In fact, had the officer required Payne to independently select the finger he placed on the phone, that would have been accessing the contents of his brain and he could have rightly refused. Interesting. But they grabbed him they and they grabbed his, grabbed his thumb, thumb and put it on there and that the was legal. <laughs> yeah, because they even mentioned about if he was unconscious, they could have done that too. And so that's, that's why it was why. okay. That's, that's the point. There was no oh, cognition wow. involved. So the, I guess the bottom line, the reason I mentioned this is we've always, we've thought for a long time that this is probably the case. Mm -hmm. Now the courts underscored it. You probably should have a passcode on your phone. Yeah. Do Android phones allow you? So on iPhones, what do you do? You, you can press and hold the two, the volume up and volume down button and the side button at the same time. And when you do, that disables face ID and touch ID. You have to type in a passcode to unlock it. There's no accident that that's there. I mean, right. that's why that that's why there. why it's there. Mm -hmm. Is there an option on Android to disable fingerprint unlock or if I think it depends unlock. on the manufacturer it depends mm. on the phone yeah um, I do know that there is um, but I've never really used it yeah. never needed you to might want to so learn I don't that know yeah exactly <laughs> worth learning how to do that but um, yes I, I know that it exists on, on pixel some phones and it's we think although again this could be thrown out at a later date that the, they can't say what's your passcode Right. They can't mm -hmm. force that's if that if requires you couldn't the, do it if you were uh, unconscious cognitive then you then they can't make exertion. you do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> which is ironic. Isn't out it? of sync in the Discord uh, reminded me. So when I, on um, this is a nothing phone two-way, when I hold down the power button, I have the option to select lockdown. Ah, which will, that's what lockdown means. Will, okay. uh, kick into By lockdown. the way, how do you like the nothing two? It's good. You know, it's a mid-range phone. I mean, it's only three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty. I, it looks yeah, nice. Yeah, it's. I it's mean, just like a knife. That's. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like differentiation is, and it's really hard to see in this light. This is such a Did, diversion from the, the topic we were just talking that about. That had the lights on the back in the yeah, past. Yeah, the they, glyphs. They, they're sort of the glyphs are there, sort of. They or? are. They, there's three different um, LEDs, which of course I'm not showing you right now because no not notifications are coming through. But you know, so if my phone is like down on the oh, table mm -hmm. and a notification comes through, it blinks really quick. Okay. It also sounds this really loud annoying blink, blink thing um yeah it's fine it's a 350 dollar device that looks a little different but doesn't perform as well as better phones you know with, with better processors but so bottom line learn the lockdown mode mm -hmm. on your phone that's an important thing and if you're really worried you probably shouldn't have fingerprint or face id turned on that was, oh i thought that you meant shouldn't have fingerprints thinking. should have no fingerprints Just let me know what to get acid <laughs> Yeah, it sounds the, like a Dick Tracy uh, bad guy that might not have fingerprints. At the end of the day, security, making security convenient has a lot of downside to it. <laughs> yeah. Yet we interact with our smartphones and our digital life so much that when there's an easier approach and we feel comfortable, it's hard not to feel like it's worth the trade off until something like that happens. Yeah. And then you're, you know, absolutely you're wishing that you had just stuck to a pin. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, if a pin's going to protect you over your th your thumbprint, you know, like, you, you probably want that. Even as simple as when I can't use my fingerprint to open up my computer and I have to type in my password, I act I like it's that. like the end yeah. of the world. It like, it's so, so, so dramatic about it. Yeah. Oh. So Why can't it just <laughs> no. let me in easier? No, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> <So>. oh. <laughs> again again with the password. Again, right? again. <laughs> it's like my, my wife hates two-factor authentication. Oh, like yeah. any, and you know, more, more bank sites and everything are, are implementing 2FA. And I'm like, I'm like big time into it, everything 2FA, but with her, it's taken a lot longer. She just hates it. I'm like, dude, like this, you th want this it. exists yeah. for a reason. Yes, it's inconvenient, yeah. but it's going to protect you. Yeah. And, you know, the problem you with not that? typing in your password as often is that you if it. you don't type it in, then you, you don't remember it. Right. You're and oh my goodness, if there's one thing that will bring my household down, <laughs> it is my partner forgetting a password. <laughs> that is a nightmare in the house. <laughs> it is the end of the world. What happens? I, I, the the it's like they it go goes screaming from a, around the normal temperature suddenly it's very cold <laughs> in the house the lights dim by it's like, like a dementor came 40% in percent. Yeah, yeah it's intense i suddenly can't breathe as well <laughs> the dog's hair is standing up and it's just like oh no he forgot a password here, here. <laughs> i'm getting chills now just thinking about it the, si the siren light starts flashing yeah <laughs> All right, that's not all in uh, legal news. The House has now passed another ban on TikTok, this <laughs> time attaching it to a foreign aid package for Ukraine and Israel, which may mean that it will get through the Senate. You remember the Senate was kind of a firewall against this uh, because they uh, refused to bring it to a vote uh, in the Senate, uh, the Democratic majority. But now... Because it's attached to this foreign aid bill, which has wide support, bill passed 360 to 58 in the House, it may well be that this passes the Senate. In which case, get ready, TikTok will be banned. No. 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 It can't happen. It can't happen. It doesn't, it seems like this is, this shouldn't happen in the United States of America. Doesn't this have a year... A year okay. clause attached to it, so yeah. not immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, so we'll in, the previous bill was six months. Right. They now have a year to divest. I don't know. Big deal. Um, <sighs> we all know actually, this. Actually, the way it works now, the new yeah. House text will provide an initial divestment period of nine months, but the president could give it another three. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that people like Steve Mnuchin, the former Secretary of the Treasury, says, "I'll take it." Uh, Oracle wants it. Um, there, there's a, but the, but the problem is apparently that the Chi a the Chinese government believes it's an illegal transfer of information. Like we just is like we prevent the Chinese government from buying our mm -hmm. technology. They don't they don't want to allow it. They also don't want the algorithm, which is not a state secret. But they want don't want the algorithm to leak out. So it might not be viable. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing to me. It's just, you can divest. Well, what if they don't want to? I, yeah. I, I, this, I know we all know this, but sometimes I just have to stop and go, the government is wild. <laughs> can we talk about how <laughs> if they, because it didn't go through on its own, they're like, you know, mm-hmm. we're working on this big package yeah. and we're going to have all of these strange, li- and I know this happens all the time. I get it. But every time it happens, I'm just like, this is just a wacky system that we have in place yeah. that we're talking about TikTok ban being snuck into foreign aid packages yeah. and sort of uh, forcing it through. And I know I, I keep harping on this point on different shows, but I still do not like the idea of the TikTok ban coming into place for the sake of all of the people who use, these are the people that got Tide Pods onto <laughs> national news because there was the whole Tide Pod challenge that was sort of fake and not real. But the point is, all very good at spreading information and all very good at teaching people how to do things. And I'm just thinking about in a world in a world where TikTok <laughs> is banned in the United States, all of the tutorial videos on how to get TikTok whenever it's banned in the United States, and then it turns out that it's some Russian you know app that is actually actually tracking uh, United States citizens and all these people have jailbroken their devices Mm. just so that they can have TikTok on their phones. Right. That, I I know it's a little sky is falling, but that is genuinely something that I'm concerned about because I have seen, my youngest brother is the type to make poor decisions with his tech. Like jail, uh, he was born in 2000, so 24. 24. Okay. Yeah, 23, 24. So he's a, um, a millennial, I guess. He is, he's a, Gen I think he's Z. Gen Z. Gen Z, okay. Uh, and he has jailbroken his device a number of times and then had his bank password stolen because of oh, it. Geez. And this and that, like, it's just a nightmare. Oh, wow. And all they do is they watch a YouTube. Oh, my, now I sound so old. All they're doing is <laughs> the they're watching kids, the YouTubes. But they seriously, watch the YouTube and all of a sudden. And learning how to do this. And I just think about with TikTok the people are going to still want TikTok even oh, yeah. if it's banned. See, they're not only are they going to want it, and especially like the younger, like the younger generation. Not only are they going to want it, they're going to know ways in which to figure out how to get it, mm-hmm. to sideload it, to go to the. Uh, I mean, I guess well, sideloading on. Okay, I don't I'm, know if I'm they're going to be able to do with that. IPhone, uh, not yet. iPhone yeah. stuff, not quite yet, right? Yeah, not There's in the gotta, US. In the e, in you the know, what's US. unseemly to me is that all of the American the site, companies, right? like Meta with Instagram yeah. and even LinkedIn and YouTube, are jumping on this, going, mm-hmm. "Yeah, great, ban TikTok because we are copying." Yeah. yeah, TikTok, and mm-hmm. it'll be good for us. Well, this would be Zuck's biggest dream come true if TikTok got banned. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh, <for laughs> so sure. really, who's the beneficiary? You almost want to say, did Zuck plan this? Yeah, it's 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 odd too, just given the fact that you know TikTok. If you're going to talk about data being mishandled, that's that's you can't say that TikTok is the only app doing that, and that it needs to be targeted. I think my favorite part has been seeing um, videos of younger people calling Congress people and just like cussing them out. Like I just think that's Are amazing. Are you serious? Yeah. I spend well, five they, hours a day on they put a big They put a big thing on TikTok saying, yeah. hey, they're, they're about to ban us, call your Congress critic. Yeah. And sure. all of the congressional offices were flooded, which some people took yeah. as, see, the Chinese government does influence <laughs> the youth. That was fodder. Yeah. That was, that they was are fun, influencing our youth. Yeah. They're actually participating they, in government. Right. How, How dare they? they? How dare they? <laughs> They're doing something we can't do ourselves, get these kids to participate in government. I just think also the ironic bit is that um, Joe Biden's re-election campaign is on TikTok. So yeah, that's of awkward. Course. Actually, yeah. probably yeah. many of the members of Congress who are banning it yeah. Are probably using it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is there, but but maybe you'll have to play devil's ag- advocate to argue this, but isn't there a threat from a company that's owned by a, a Chinese company, ByteDance, that is, you know, the Chinese Communist Party has shares in ByteDance, but more importantly, they have laws that allow them to, to open up any servers and see what's on there. Isn't there a threat? to our American citizens, our, our young people today on TikTok? You know, I, I can't even say it with a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if they start asking our young people for their, I don't know, social security numbers well, and their deepest yeah. secrets. Yeah, and, that's yeah. where my mind is at too. Like at the end of the day, like our data is being spread across all kinds of apps. TikTok, TikTok is one of many, many services mm-hmm. that we are putting our, our information online. 
there's the the nationalist kind of aspect of this, which is no anything China bad, you mm -hmm. know, and and that like immediate reaction, and maybe there's something to that, but. If there is, I still have yet to really see any yes. of the actual legitimate Uncle proof Sam, other yeah. than where are the receipts? Worry, there aren't concern, any. Fear, yeah. There's also, uncertainty. to me, a, a creepy nexus between... Uh, nexus. Uh, 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 yeah, creepy nexus. <laughs> That's a show title. Just that watch down, out. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> the creepy nexus between uh, this kind of uh, xenophobia, it's mm -hmm. China, right, mm -hmm. uh, and... I think there's also, especially among older members of Congress, this the kids are always staring at their phone all the time. They gotta stop that. There's there's a deep feel, feeling, deep rooted feeling mm -hmm. that whatever the kids are doing with their phones is bad. Mm -hmm. And and it's we gotta stop that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think a lot of it is that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you you've brought this up before when uh, you know, there's been some pushback on that and you reminded well, everyone that video games got the same thing. Yeah. Uh, rock and TV, roll. rock and roll, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, books <laughs> were yeah. also going to ruin For kids' sure. imaginations. And so, yeah, there's always that deep-seated fear. Moral about, panic. Yeah, moral, it's it's yeah. the natural ebb and flow. It's, it's what happens yeah. when we get older. We start looking at the younger <laughs> generation and going, oh, back in my day. Yeah. Who did one of our... Um, Regular contributors actually made a moral panic PowerPoint <laughs> of all of the... Who was that? Do you remember, Benito, who that was who did that? I do uh, not. Yeah, he was on the show a couple of weeks ago. And he, he agrees so much that he actually made a, a presentation about, you know, starting with, dare I say it, Gutenberg and the printing press... Uh, yeah, you know what I'm. Everybody could have it. Yeah, that's the Jeff Jarvis drink signal. Um, but but people thought that books were going to take away your imagination. I, my generation, rock and roll was you know, and long hair and older generations have always thought the younger generations screwed up and we got to stop whatever it is they're doing because they're they're gonna. But you know, we had. I have to say, we 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 have had people on the show. Uh, chiefly Brianna Wu, she said, look, in my run for Congress, I got a lot of access to national intelligence agencies and intelligence operatives who convinced me, she wouldn't say how, just like Senate and Congress says, well, we know, but we won't tell you how, that there is a real threat from TikTok. And I rack my brain. She said, if you knew, Brianna well, said, if know. you yeah, knew, you would me. support this. Yeah. <laughs> but yet, nobody's yet produced that. Yeah. And, I, and, and it's hard for me to imagine how the mechanism of this. Okay, so right. one is privacy but we know the chinese government can can buy uh, on the open market from data brokers mm -hmm. all sorts of information about us which is collected by american companies like meta yeah. mm -hmm. so i don't know if it does any more to protect your privacy uh at all and then two the other one is propaganda right that it would that it would brainwash our youth i guess that's possible I, yeah i suppose that's possible that's the but, only place where I could start to be convinced because of what we saw in past elections um, with Twitter primarily, or X formerly known as Twitter, uh, primarily. And I guess yeah, on Facebook Twitter as well. is still running rampant with Chinese and Russian propaganda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I guess the, the kids don't really use Twitter, so it's not a... <laughs> but Facebook too, right? Yeah. yeah. I... But tell again, me how it's worse. I haven't seen, but and, and I haven't seen proof of right. that being an issue. Right. And I guess if it started, then yeah, that's whenever I'm suddenly compelled to believe this yeah. should right. be banned. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Agreed. Do we all think Uyghurs are awful people because the Chinese government thinks so and put it in TikTok? No, <laughs> I haven't seen anything about the Uyghurs on yeah, TikTok. To be same. frank, uh, what what exactly? Well, that's but true. That, but, but so you think you it's know, to sap our nation's our nation's youth productivity? Pro <laughs> bodily <laughs> precious bodily <laughs> fluids are going to all yeah. Yeah, well, that's a bad thing. Oh, it's like Wall-E. Oh. But you ban Sorry it because of yeah, that. That's, yeah. that's a personal responsibility <laughs> thing, right? Like yeah. the, and, and by the way, doesn't Instagram want to do the same thing to you? Yeah, they all right. Do. Yeah. yeah, they're all copying. So they're should we ban Instagram? Sentence. Let's ban Instagram too. In place. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Now we can't do that because mm -hmm. of First Amendment. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a little arbitrary. It seems a little arbitrary. Mm -hmm. uh, but the know. fact that this is the one thing that anyway, everyone could agree on, it's kind of odd. 
I uh-huh. kind of think there should be other priorities, but. Well, well I mean, we won't get into because it's not really <laughs> our bailiwick, but it is aid for Israel as yeah. well, which is a very controversial yeah. in this country. Uh, in fact, two, 28 Google engineers lost their job this week mm-hmm. protesting uh, Google's involvement in uh, weapons systems that Israel's using. And, it, and Google just fired them. Mm-hmm. In the past, Google's kind of said, no, oh, no. you're right. We shouldn't be doing that and yeah. back down. This time Google said, no, get out of here. Mm-hmm. You're fired. TikTok has a ton of, ton of pro Weijer anti-Communist Party content, says Joe in mm-hmm. our Discord. I, that's what I think. Yeah. They don't allow it in China. TikTok is ironically banned in China. <laughs> <laughs> if you search for Uyghur on TikTok, you'll find all sorts of pros- positive content about Uyghurs. Mm-hmm. And my son's sandwich videos, which everybody should watch. It's all the delicious. Spice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I brought that I up. I can't wait to get my, re- my uh, recipe book. <laughs> Got it up pre-order. Did you, did you yeah. order it? Heck Thank yeah. you. Can't wait. All right, we're going to take a little break. Then there's more congressional action afoot. The Senate has reauthorized uh, the FISA bill, particularly Section 702. Not just reauthorized it, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, but extended it in ways that at least some senators, like Ron Wyden and others, are against. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. You're watching a very special... You know, I should go back and look at the things we talked about 19 years ago in the first twit. I don't think it was this. <laughs> we didn't imagine a TikTok, right? We weren't really worried about privacy yet. We didn't even know what social media really was. I, in 2005, probably 2005. not. Twitter didn't even exist yet. This is pre-Twitter. We're older than Twitter. 34 <laughs> minutes of Skyping fun. <laughs> episode <laughs> one. Oh, you Skype was up. a thing. Yeah, Skype oh, yeah. was still a thing. That's how long Pour ago one that Skype. was. <laughs> I saw John Oliver, even John Oliver, a couple of weeks ago said, Skype, how did you miss this? Yeah, how right? did you lose <laughs> in COVID? How did that happen? <laughs> That is kind of sad. It it's is. kind of pathetic. If you had one job, yeah, I just <laughs> don't understand how you butchered that. Yeah. Uh, what else were we talking about in two thousand five? Well, you know, I'm, it was Patrick Norton. It was Kevin Rose. Yeah, and uh, Robert Herron. Robert Herron, David Prager. It was expensive. all people from the screensavers. Basically. I mean, you know, it was so early in podcasting that apparently show notes weren't built with topics. But <laughs> no, we, didn't, we didn't know show notes. What are those? <laughs> I mean, there are show notes, but they say nothing about the actual topics. April seventeenth, <laughs> just kind of like we're doing this thing. Trust me, in thirty five minutes there wasn't a lot. We were in a yeah. brew pub in San Francisco. It was right after Macworld Expo, one of the last Macworld Expos. No, I guess they went on for another five or six years. Actually, seven years, right? We plan to do this weekly with a rotating cast of characters. Your input is welcome, parentheses. Anyone want to design a logo? We didn't have a logo. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dorothy Yamamoto, who was a retired graphic designer, she'd retired to raise a family, went, thought, I want to get back into graphic design. She designed that twit bug. She had it sideways because it was more like an and gate or an and gate. I never knew that. Yeah. And I said, well, let's turn it this way so it has legs and put an eye in it and uh, to personify it a little bit. And it became the twit bug. Yeah. Uh, which you could see right behind me on the uh, on the gear up here. Sort of. uh, and then you could you could see this legs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then kind of looks like it's, the gear is smiling at you. The right gear now, is actually. smiling. Oh. Hi, gear. And then <laughs> we didn't have the name either. We uh, it was called the Revenge of the Screen yes. Savers. Yes. And uh, R O T S S. R O T S S. And uh, immediately Comcast sent us a cease and desist letter. <laughs> Said you can't, you can't. We're still using that name. You can't use it. They they had kept it for G Four TV. So uh, we also asked the audience to name it. Was anybody around back then in the beginning? We got a lot of name suggestions. Were you? Yeah. I the the one name that kind of rang a bell in my head was This Week in Geek or The Week in Geek. Mm. I said, I don't want to use the word geek. What about just This Week in Tech and then the acronym? And people don't, people think I did that by accident. The acronym <laughs> will be TWIT, which I thought was funny. And I, to this day, I get emails saying, you know, that it's not a nice thing to say yeah. in I, England. Every time I explain it, I have yeah, to explain it, it to everybody. Yeah. I or, thought that was not a nice thing to say. Yeah, it is. It's not a nice thing to it's say. It's self to called self-deprecating. <laughs> or a pregnant goldfish. Did you know that? That's a twit. Fun fact. Yeah, fun fact. It is? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That is a fun fact. <laughs> the funnest. Anyway, 19 years uh, later, and we're still doing it. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. We used to have a round table. We've lost half of it. But other than that, 
Everything else. <laughs> Knights of the Half Table. Knights of the Half Table. <laughs> uh, everything else is uh, still the same. It's been, a, it's been a nice 19 years, and I thank everybody who's uh, made that uh, possible. Um, uh, and you know, all of you, especially uh, my wife and our executive producer and our CEO, uh, Lisa Laporte, who put us on a sound financial footing. I had to hire her. I, didn't, I hadn't met her. My, my, our tax guy said, you're going to jail. <laughs> you, you need to immediately hire somebody to put this, these books in order. These are terrible. You're going to go to jail. And I said, okay. What, I mean, I don't know. What do I know about books? Okay. <laughs> this is about 2008, I think, 2007. I said, okay, what do I do? He said, well, I got two names. I'm going to give you these names. And uh, you can hire one of them to do this. And the first one was Lisa. I never, I never found out what the second name was. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa had uh, a specialty bookkeeping business where she would take people who were going to jail and fix their books. No, so like Come that like, was not an exaggeration. I've heard some like... stories. It's not, a, not ex uh, sort of. Anyway, she fixed the books. <laughs> you didn't go to jail, yay! I didn't go to jail, and I thought, well, I should marry that woman. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so she she actually put us in a sound financial foot put, uh, footing and kept me out of jail, which is pretty darn good. So fix is a wrong word. To, I did, she didn't fix the books. She <laughs> corrected. She, corrected. She, um, you might have escaped jail for a little she bit. Didn't yeah. fix, she didn't fix. She's 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all are the, the same numbers, but they're in order now. Before you... <laughs> Have I incriminated myself? Oh boy, just stop she talking. Didn't fix them. There aren't two sets of books. Trust me. There's bar there is barely. There were no books. That was the problem. There were no books. They've been waiting for this moment. Yes. Yeah. Now we're here. Got him. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> got him. We got him. So Leo, real quick, I uh, saved the MP3 of episode one. Did you run it through an AI? I ran it through oh an AI for transcript. I popped that into perplexity and said, tell me all the topics on the podcast. <laughs> and you talked about no news <laughs> on episode one. I've been saying that for 20 years almost. Yeah. There's no news this yeah. week. No news. <laughs> Goes you discussed on various tech-related <laughs> topics like cell phone carriers, gadgets, websites that you're working on. Yeah. And you reminisce about your time at Tech TV. It was really a terrible show. It sounds oh. like it was awful. <laughs> episode one. Just we people went hanging on. out. That's Dvorak it. joined us on episode four. He kind of became a, a regular. Uh, yes, and we went, this, we're in our third studio now. The original was The Cottage. People thought I was doing it in my uh, basement or my bedroom. But it was kind of like that, wasn't it? It was a little tiny room in the garret of, of this cottage, which slowly expanded. We metastasized and eventually took the whole cottage, <laughs> cottage up. And then uh, I realized one day when uh, the entire staff was sitting around a small table, it's much smaller than this, there were about eight people, and they were all spitting at each other. <laughs> I thought, I gotta get a, we got to get a bigger place. Lisa and I went down the road a pit. It was on the same street and, and found a much larger 10,000 square foot empty uh, facility. She built a beautiful studio in there. We were there for five years, the brick house. And about uh, eight, six years ago, how many years? Seven. Seven years ago, we moved in here. The owners of the building that we were in decided to triple the lease. They had been told by the previous owner, oh, they'll never move. They built a million dollar studio in there. But what they hadn't, what he didn't know is when you build a set, you build it so that you can move it. <laughs> so we said, no, thanks. Took the whole thing and it's all here and it looks the same and it's because it's a set. And if we had to move it again, we could. Anyway, it's been a fun time. And I thank all the people who've been with us uh, for all or some of that time and to our great Club Twit members uh, as well. All right, enough reminiscing. I did that. It was done. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, our episode today brought to you by something brand new and something very cool. You've heard us talk about Anchor. We love Anchor. Great company. Anchor created a couple of sub-brands. One was Soundcore for sound, for headphones and stuff. The other was Eufy, E-U-F-Y, and that was for their home security systems, their cameras. We got, the other day, we got the Eufy Video Smart Lock E330, and Micah, you installed this. That's all it took, that one Phillips screwdriver. screwdriver. He installed it on the door to our engineering room. The Eufy Video Lock combines two features you want. It's got a great camera on it, and it is a remote lock. It's got fingerprint recognition, 0.3 seconds. It unlocks in one second. It's got a self-learning chip, which will get better and better, more accurate with every use. It's battery powered. It's got a 10, it's a removable 10,000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery that goes about four months. There's a battery. You could have a second one, right? And 
swap it in, or you could just plug it in and it charges up. You get a low battery notification before it runs out, so it's, it's not going to run out. But here's the thing. You're never locked out. It's one of the things I really like about this. It has a key. So if for some reason it's not working, you can slide that little piece on the, on the bottom side and unlock it with a key. So the fingerprint, touchpad, you can you can share the code with somebody. Say, Look at that. There's a little key in there. I, to me, that's like a. I love that. You got to. That's table stakes. Yeah. Because if the thing dies for whatever reason, it's just like before. You still have a key to get into your house. But I love that you can have passcode unlocking. You can have remote control. It's look at this. 2K clear sight, two way audio, enhanced night vision. There's Burke. He says, "Can you let me in?" And Micah can do it from down the hall. Look at that. You can also share the code with. Workmen or anybody who has to get in the house, friends and family, and then and then revoke it after you get tired of mom sleeping on the couch. <laughs> but here's the best part of the Eufy video lock. No monthly fees, no subscription, and all your recordings are stored locally, so you don't want to ever have to pay for storage. That is great. You just pay one time, you get it set up, and you're good to go. 18-month warranty, which is fantastic, and Eufy's 24-7 professional customer service team. The Eufy Video Lock. Search for it on Amazon, E-U-F-Y Video Lock, or you can go to eufy.com, E-U-F-Y.com. This is great. We still have it on the engineering room door, and Burke still can't get in. <laughs> That's just a side benefit. E-U-F-Y, the Eufy Video Lock. Thank you, Eufy, for supporting our show. So, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or the FISA Act, which I think basically is a consequence of 9-11, right? They gave all mm -hmm. these extra police powers um, to uh, the intelligence community, and it expires. Every few years, it expires because the idea back in 2001 was this shouldn't go on forever, only while there's a big emergency. Well, here we are 23 years later, and it's been renewed every single time. Uh, it was renewed again uh, on Friday, midnight. Actually, it was, it was going to expire on midnight Friday, but they managed to uh, get it passed. So it's going to continue for another year, but uh, it's expanded. And this is not great. Senator uh, Ron Wyden and Josh Hawley, senators, uh, did not like language in the bill that expanded the definition of electronic communications services or service provider. The new provision says anyone who has access to equipment that is being or may be used to transmit or store wire or electronic communications. So... In the past, you'd have to be a cell phone company, a phone company, an electronic communications service provider. Now, if you're a landlord with a with phone lines in the basement, if you're Dropbox where people could store this stuff, basically anyone now can be kind of subpoenaed with these secret subpoenas. Uh, actually, it's not even subpoenas, warrant, warrantless spying, as long as the FISA court approves it. The Wyden said... The expansion would force ordinary Americans and small businesses to conduct secret warrantless spying. They they introduced an amendment that would have struck that language. It failed. So the FI, the new FISA Act is more expansive than ever before. Uh, Rand Paul and Dick Durbin introduced separate amendments imposing warrant requirements before you could surveil Americans. That failed. Uh... So basically, uh, the the feds now have kind of limitless capability to spy on us. While they're saying that we can't have apps. But not TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, Whatever you do. It's yeah, yeah. run down, actually, yeah. with, with all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Kind of very, very hip, hypocritical mm -hmm. kind of um, opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah. And again, it's that same argument that, well, we should be, we have to do whatever we have to do to protect Americans. And, and, and the intelligence community says, look, you don't know right. how, you don't know how, well, dangerous, again, how right. dangerous this is and the, what we've prevented from happening in this, you know, you can thank the, you know, the fact that there have been no terrorist acts in the last 23, well, no foreign terrorist acts, I mean, domestic terrorism, but there's no foreign terrorist acts in the last 23 years. You can thank the, the FISA Act. Um, 
I don't know. I, uh, the, it bugs me. I feel it, like there should you should have to have a warrant. I'm it sorry. bugs me too. Yeah, I, yeah, I agreed. Look, I <laughs> I understand that argument, and there's a part of me that is sympathetic to that argument, but it's the road that that goes down where. Yes, I understand the way that it may have helped when it came to certain uh, foreign terrorist attacks. Great. But if we're using this to now, it's the fact that not only do we keep renewing something that had this expiration built into it because we said we shouldn't keep doing all of this spying, not only do we keep renewing it, but now we're expanding on it. I think that speaks to exactly what the fear is that we're talking about in the first place, that it will become overreach. It's becoming overreach. And that, to me, is what is an argument in and of itself against it. But I don't see that changing. That's the problem, right? It's, a, um, it's not changing. No, Here's a guest essay. Bipartisan uh, support for something like yeah, this. In the New like York Times. Kind of all in. Government surveillance keeps us safe. Who? Who Written wrote that? Who? Uncle yeah. Sam? <laughs> uh, this is by government. Matthew Waxman and Adam Klein, uh, both senior security uh, people. Actually, uh, Klein was the chairman of the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board. Nice job. Civil Liberties. Nice job, Adam. Mr. Waxman uh, was a national security uh, advisor to the Bush administration. I mean, I guess you could make that argument. Uh, it keeps us safe. But... Um, I don't. I, you know, this comes down to, I guess, what your belief is about how trustworthy uh, our government is, and our intelligence agencies, and our law enforcement mm -hmm. is, and 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 whether they should have untrammeled uh, information um, if they're if they if they're in, they should have whatever intel they need to do their job. I mean, great if you need, if you need certain pieces of intel, that's fine. I think it's the the warrantless kind of no. Trust me, I, I, I'm going to make the right decision. Mm -hmm kind of aspect to it that rubs me the wrong way. As but, if biases don't exist too, in terms of, as if biases don't exist too, in terms of who might be targeted by. Well, and think about it. To, yeah. I mean, the government changes hands every four years. <laughs> yeah, right. You open something up and then some, somebody else entirely gets in control of that and can do very different, you know, very mm -hmm. bad things potentially. Some uh, privacy advocates uh, have called this a Stasi-like bill. The Stasi was the East German mm -hmm. secret police. Um. I mean, <laughs> when I think about the, the whole idea of this being created at one point out of a need at this moment, 9-11 was this moment that took everybody, you know, by surprise. It was a lot of emotion. I remember that time. And I remember, you know, I, I remember a lot of things happening through true emotion because we felt like we wanted, when I, when I say we, I had absolutely nothing to do with any of this, but we felt like we wanted some sort of control or influence over the chaos and craziness that was happening at that time to feel a little safe. And yet here we are 20 some odd years later, it continues to happen. It continues to get extended and extended. It just kind of makes me think, well, well then what is the point at which it doesn't anymore? Yeah. Or, or do they just kind of you know, make, make the declaration that, okay, that's actually a lot of baloney. Uh, we've been drinking from this trough for far too long yeah. to let go of it. Yeah, <laughs> we're too comfortable. We're too comfortable. This is a we couldn't imagine doing what coat. we do without this. <laughs> yeah. And that's where the system is really built up around this as a need. So it goes beyond mm -hmm. those problems. I think that's an important lesson is that if you give them these powers, they're not ever going to move <gasps> back. Right. If you give absolutely. a moose a muffin, exactly. it's yes. going to want a cookie. Yeah. Exactly. If you give a mouse yeah. cookie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really true that it never goes in the other direction. It always no, seems rarely. To, to slowly mm -hmm. go. Now, a number of people say that's really exaggeration to call it the Stasi amendment. It's that's uh, an interview with the New York Times. Uh, Jim Himes, a Democrat from C Connecticut, s said, uh, decried comparisons between the text and the East German secret police, saying critics of the provision were massively exaggerating the 702 program's domestic reach. It's interesting that they make exemptions for nursing homes, coffee shops. Uh, there are a few places that they can't ask for data from cleaning contractors. Uh, but... 
the fact they that they hat, exempt the way, those they few, just and pulled out yeah, things. they must exactly. <laughs> yeah, and this we need at least well, some things that don't Holy qualify. Got Please, it. don't worry, your coffee shop is safe. <laughs> Karaoke bar. My at least mom, we have Starbucks. You're not going to snoop on my mom in her old age home. Oh well, that's a relief because <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all boring stuff. There not, that they, they don't, don't want, want it anymore. anyway. Yeah. That's right. Uh, uh, so okay, we've we talked a lot about. It's it's all very woe. Woe is us, not even woe is me. Do we have anything we can do about yes. any of this? Encryption. But guess what they're attacking next? Yeah. Encryption. So encryption is I mean, look, I don't I'm not in favor of terrorists. <laughs> we should make that clear. I'm so glad you said that, Leo, because I was really <laughs> yeah, concerned. Bad actually. guys are bad and we should catch them. Yeah. But the problem is these nets also extend to everybody. It means no one has privacy in, the, in, a, in an attempt to catch the bad guys. And that's fine. That's all well and good if you say, well, you know, I trust, uh, I trust the FBI. They're not going to target me. Except that they, they have a history. They targeted Martin Luther King mm -hmm. for years uh, because he was a civil rights advocate. And J. Edgar Hoover didn't like that so much. So... You give them these powers, and there's, you know, maybe right now it's safe, but there's no guarantee that they're not going to misuse those powers sometime in the future. Ron Wyden, who we've mentioned before, he, he's the senior senator from Oregon and very much a privacy advocate, mm -hmm. says this represents one of the most dramatic and terrifying expansions of government surveillance authority in history. I don't think Ron Wyden is uh, prone to superlatives. I think that the, if he says that, it makes me, it worries me. I mean, he has done the most of anybody in Congress to protect our privacy. Yeah, even going as far as to using some sneaky mechanisms to put things into public light. I remember him writing, well, his staff writing a letter. I, I wish I could remember the exact details, but essentially by writing a letter inquiring about something, that letter was available to the public because of the way that our government is set up. And that in turn led to us being able to know a little bit more about some secret program that was in place. Right. So I like that. Yeah, I wanted to do that I on TikTok. I should mention <laughs> that. Yeah, put it on TikTok. That's a good idea. I want to see what's going on. I should mention that Jim Himes, who we just talked about, who says, oh, you're exaggerating it, also went around waging what some members of Congress have called, according to the Wired magazine, a campaign of fear. An hour before the vote on Friday, Himes openly threatened U.S. lawmakers supporting the warrant requirement, which seems to me a pretty minimal thing to say. You know what? You really should have a warrant before you do this. Claiming if passed, he'd ensure those lawmakers face the brunt of the blame in the wake of any future terrorist attacks. It was his fault. Ron Wyden made this happen. Himes said if we turn off the ability of the government to query U.S. person data... Maybe he should have studied language. I don't <laughs> query U.S. person data. Hey, U.S. person, I'm querying your data. The consequences will be known soon, and we will audit why what happened happened. What is what? <laughs> and accountability will be visited upon their heads. I swear to is God, is that really what's written? <laughs> yeah. what? I added the wow. upon their heads. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, because okay, that it says accountability will be visited. Okay, that is where else would it be but upon dot, their dot, heads? Dot. Nudge, nudge. You know what I'm <laughs> on their butts. I don't know. Okay, I, you know, the problem is there's never been information about you know the uh, intelligence agencies say no, no, we we protect you, we block a lot of stuff, but they never say what they mm -hmm. stop. They never say what they block. And and what we've looked at is historic records, like this yeah. Martin Luther King story, yeah. where, in fact, they use these powers uh, in an undemocratic way. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't say about the possible restraint or, or ways in which they are, you know, working in your favor. Mm -hmm. But what we do hear about are the really bad things that happen. Exactly. And so, you yeah. know, it's no surprise that we're... I don't know. I don't. I don't. Suspicious. Yeah. I know you. Uh, you know, to some uh, of our audience, we're, they're probably saying, "Oh, you guys are a bunch of pinkos, <laughs> and you should just let the government uh, surveil you because that's uh, they're not going to do anything bad with it, and that's uh, protecting us against bad guys." It's, I mean, that is a point of view. <laughs> that's the extent. Sure. Of it. That is what <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. That is indeed a point of view. <laughs>
Upon right. your head. Anyway, it's the law of the land. Uh, uh, the president has already signed it. That's how urgent it was. They didn't want to go one more day without this ability to surveil you. But not in an old age home or a coffee shop, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. If you... If you're a bad guy. But I do think that's the thing is encryption is your friend in this. Yep. Yeah. And they recognize that for bad no. guys, you know, I mean, what's to stop a bad guy from using signal? They do all the time. We know that corporate malefactors do all the time. What, you know, maybe crooks are too stupid to do this. Terrorists are too stupid. But encryption's your friend. And so that's why they go after encryption. That's why the FBI went to Apple and said, mm -hmm. decrypt this guy's phone. Mm -hmm. and, and then when that doesn't work, they get it they get from a, the a hacker to do it yeah mm -hmm. i can't yeah. think of the name of that company now actually they ended, uh, uh, the the exploit was uh was um anyway we've learned now the hack uh i can't remember what it was but we yeah. talked about this in security now no we thought they went to pegasus uh they used pegasus uh, mm -hmm. but in fact it wasn't it was another hack it was a a zero day uh i don't know i i don't want to look uh, outrage is good for ratings and I'm not. I don't want to promote outrage, except I do want ratings. So yeah. maybe I, you know, <laughs> I am. A, I am mad as hell. <laughs> I don't want to promote outrage. I think it's important that we have a, a reasonable conversation in which we say, "Well, does it protect us? Is it something we need to do?" As you point out, Abrar, uh, the targets of these kinds of investigations often are just people who are on the outs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a reason there's skepticism, particularly among, you know, communities of color. And yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not a good look. But yeah, the things that we do tend to find out about what the FBI has kind of uh, done is not flattering and, and tends to lean towards those communities in particular. So, Meanwhile, yeah. China has told, because they don't want encryption either, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. They've told Apple, hey, you know, could you take Signal and Telegram and WhatsApp out of the App Store? Be why? Encryption, right? It's just, it's a vibe check. There's it's a vibe, past we the vibe you know, check. Yeah. You know, yeah. no. so, and Apple said, yes, yeah, sure, fine. Not the first time, right? No, Apple's, not Apple's the first removed. time. Apple oh. says, we are obligated to follow the laws in the countries where we operate, even when we disagree. I mean, I guess, you know, what Google did when they were put to the screws in this, they withdrew from China. But Apple, mm -hmm. this is a big part of their business. And yeah. economically, manufacturing. They just, yeah, they, mm -hmm. don't, they can't. They, they have won't. a lot of, they won't. Lot of interest. Yeah, that's tricky territory, yeah, yeah. Which is why they're looking at other places yeah, to exactly, expand manufacturing, right? yeah. I mean, they'd be, you know, probably if they had it their way, they'd get out as, as quickly mm -hmm. as possible to not yeah. you know feel the, the influence there. Yeah. Is Android, is Android sideloading legal in China? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, in China, that's a good question. I don't know. It certainly happens. Is it legal? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Android phones do outsell iPhone in China, uh, okay. particularly phones from Huawei, Chinese mm -hmm. companies like Huawei and Xiaomi. Yeah. Um, yeah. They are the best sellers in China. I'm going to guess, <laughs> take a wild guess, I think and say that those OSs that. are somewhat more locked down yeah, in China so. than they are in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a good point because if Apple takes these programs out of the App Store mm -hmm. on the iPhone, they're not available on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And they've done the same with VPNs, by the way. They've removed those from the iPhone in the past. Um, collectively, according to the Wall Street Journal, Instagram, X, Facebook, YouTube, and WhatsApp, all banned in China, have been downloaded from the App Store 170 million times in China over the last 10 years. So that's not a massive penetration in a country of a billion uh, people, but still. That's true. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if there's a This Week in Tech show in China happening where they're talking about us, their own bands. Because there is a parallel, the isn't there? Yeah. And, and honestly, there will be retribution. If we ban TikTok, mm -hmm. of course the Chinese are going to ban all American apps. Because, yeah, Steve Gibson recently was talking about the, I can't, it's like Operation A or something, and it has to do with getting rid of American technology at any government level. Any uh, government body cannot have or purchase any kind of technology that's come from the United States right. going forward. So Chinese government and officials can't have that. iPhones. Right. Uh, they have their own operating system. Their security cameras can't be yeah. have any U.S. tech in it. Anything well, there's like a that. strong parallel. We're doing there's the same thing. Exactly. Super strong yeah. parallel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it opens, it's okay if we do it. To a certain degree, not, feels like they're commies. Tap. They're no. dirty commies. <laughs> and if they do it, it's bad. But if we do it, right. we're protecting ourselves against the dirty commies. Right? Well, that That is the... That's what's out there. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for listening to the People's Republic of Twit. I do wonder, though. I mean, they would have to be doing it as like a pirate broadcast, right? If they're complaining about I don't know. Chinese over... I don't know. You know, it, it, it's hard to completely shut down dissent in a country of a billion people. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. But they so sure do try. They try. Yeah. Uh, global apps like Reddit, Spotify, and ChatGPT not available in the Chinese app store. In fact, 14,000 apps are blocked in China. There's a website called applecensorship.com. You know, it's hard for me to blame Apple for doing this. I don't think at this point they have a whole lot of choice mm -hmm. considering how <sighs> entrenched their, their manufacturing and other aspects of their business are there. At a certain point, like I'm sure, I'm sure that Apple is working on ways to, like you said, just a few minutes. Ago, I think it's maybe I feel it's naive to blame Apple because that would suggest that this company has some sort of golden moral compass, and because it has that, then oh my goodness, why would they make this choice to still? And I think that that's very naive to mm -hmm. think that a company. That is a company that yes, they're they do have a lot of, of they do a lot of things right and try to do well, but it's still a company that's making money and it's still capitalism. And so yeah. this idea that like, well, I can't believe that Apple would still do that. It's it's a company. Yeah. I'm not I think surprised. it's a very it's a very US centric kind of thing to say about a company like Apple yeah. though, because there, there is a lot of really oh, positive I belief about once Apple as a definitely company. Definitely was, you know, drinking the apple juice for sure. Yeah, but I've, I've <laughs> since inoculated myself. <laughs> you started working here, and then yeah. we, we brainwashed you. Is what happened. Yeah. He said, Rawr. and I said, you know what? Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a little break. We are so glad to have this fit, this panel in-house, in studio, with a live studio audience. Yeah. Micah Sargent, great to see you. Abrar Alhidi from CNET, uh, great to see you. Um, Jason Howell, the tech exploder. The tech exploder. <laughs> I like saying that. The tech exploder. We, I always call Harry McCracken the technology editor. Be careful, because he stopped using that name years ago, but I still call him that. I'm going to call you, the, from now on, you're the tech exploder. I, yeah, I don't know that I intended for it to be like an identity. It's, like right. I it's you. Text too bad. You're the tech exploder now. <laughs> it's too late. You're the tech exploder. And one, two, three, four, five, about 20 wonderful, good-looking people uh, from uh, our studio audience. It's great to have you yeah. as well. And shout out if you... You know, I'm really curious. We've been talking about this, you know, privacy. Are most of you in favor of privacy, encryption, uh, keeping <laughs> the <laughs> Fed's hands and eyes out of your stuff? Yes or no? Or or do you? Is there anybody who who says, yeah, no, I think that they should be able to uh, spy as much as they want to protect us. It's part of being secure. You can say that. No, he's shaking his head. No. <laughs> anybody? Say it out loud, real quite loud. Yeah, no. I mean, in Canada, we have the same issue, but it, it's even It's like the same thing in Canada. You're right. We're ahead Probably all Western wow. nations, certainly the five eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, that's, we're all in cahoots. You said it's worse as in there's more overreach? Oh, uh, the, the government is pushing so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even the podcast, you know, they're going to they've given CRTC, which is the regulating body for broadcast in Canada, they now have the power, uh, or will shortly, to... Um, Podcast. Oh no! Yeah. Wow. They're the F uh, the Canadian FCC. If you're, yeah, and if yeah, that's right. And if you're under a million dollars, they'll leave you alone. If you're making under a million, but anything over that. Oh. Um, yeah. They can <laughs> <laughs> so I cross the border and I download your podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that. I don't know if that would fly in the U.S. If if the FCC said no, we want to regulate internet content would be very problematic. Mm -hmm. Is that C-18 that did that? Is that? I was trying to remember the number, I think you're right. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that gives the CRTC power over podcasts. That's, the reason the FCC has power over broadcast is because that's, we all own the spectrum, and so the government has the right to regulate that spectrum 
which is reasonable. You're given a license to use the spectrum. But that's why they've never had the right to regulate the Internet, because that's not pub we're not using public spectrum uh, to do this show. Mm -hmm. Um, that would, to me, that would be, them's fighting words. That would be problematic. I didn't realize C-18 went that far. I know Michael Geist, who's very good at outspoken attorney in Canada, has been railing against C-18 for years. Uh, but it passed. ISP should be a public utility. Wouldn't that open that up? To that well, that's interesting. Yeah, so the net neutrality uh, thing, which the FCC is now going to be voting on, return, restoring net neutrality, changes the classification of Internet service providers to telecommunications providers. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> yes, step one. I hope not. That would, be, uh, that would be a bad thing. Our show today brought to you. It's great to have you. Thank you. We have such a, you know what I love? We have such a smart audience. And since day one, even before then, back when I was doing the radio show in the 90s, we've always wanted to make it more interactive. You know, it's calling radio shows nice, but but to get more voices, and that's why we've always had chat rooms going. We have our Discord now. But I always look for ways to make that even more a group voice. It's hard to do, but I, we're going to work on that. I think Alex Lindsay has actually done a really interesting mm -hmm. thing with Office mm -hmm. Hours, mm -hmm. which is essentially kind of a group call of 20 or 50 or 60 people. Yeah, some nods. Um, and I'm, I'm, I've talked to Alex a lot about how we could do something like that. That's kind of what I think that's the goal, uh, really democratizing media. So it's not somebody on a stage talking down to you, but it's a conversation between all parties. Uh, anyway, our show today brought to you by, hey, I think there's a new sponsor, In Touch CX. I believe so. In Touch CX is revolutionizing how brands connect with customers with its proprietary framework, which identifies key areas of automation that can drive productivity engagement, quality, and cost benefits across the entire customer journey in all industries. The experts at InTouch CX guide you through what many companies find, well, frankly, overwhelming. Where to start, who to work with, what to prioritize first. InTouch CX will enhance your customer experiences with their industry-leading AI and automated solutions for all channels. That's I'm talking voice, chat, and email support. You can deliver more engaging and personalized experiences at every stage by harnessing the power of AI and automation. So let me talk about some different stages. In pre-interaction, the fir your first touch with the customer, you can speed up email handling time by 30% by creating predictive email replies and using AI to automate easy work. A lot of times that's sufficient. That's going to clear the deck. Then... You go to the next step during interaction, you can apply AI predictive analysis. They're on, the, they're on the line with an agent, voice, chat, or email, but the agent's productivity can be boosted, and you can increase customer satisfaction using that AI predictive analysis. This is where I think AI is so powerful with its hand-in-hand -hand with, with a human to create a really good solution. Then after the interaction, you can achieve up to 82% resolution satisfaction by using generative AI, to analyze all customer cases and develop smart response templates that improve accuracy, efficiency, and productivity all the way up and down the line, right? This is very smart. Unlock new opportunities between user experience, customer experience, and employee experience to see real improvements in the metrics that matter most. Transform your business by anticipating what's next. Discover new ways of working and how InTouch CX's industry-leading AI and automation solutions can get you there. If you want to know more, go to the website, intouchcx.com slash twit. I-N-T-O-U-C-H, intouchcx.com slash twit. Really interesting product. Very interesting company. And I think the right way to use AI, in, you know, to, to make the interactions better. Not to replace them, but to make them better. Thank you, InTouchCX. Great to have you aboard on our show. Netflix. Yeah, anybody watch Netflix here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any any Netflix watchers out here? Time to time. Yeah. They are blowing it away. No kidding. Subscribers jumped 16% year over year. By the way, as soon as they announced that, say, but don't ever ask for us that number again. We're never going to tell you again. <laughs> they're no longer they're no longer reporting paid memberships starting next year. 
I mean, it kind of makes sense, though. I, it's while time, it's up, finally. tell them, yeah, tell exactly. them now. Leave on yeah. a high. They focused on growing profit more than boosting subscribers, so they think that's more important financially. If we say, "Well, look, yeah, this is supported model." Yeah, we're making more money. So, what do you care? If if everybody switched from a paid model to an ad model, they'd make more money, but they'd have the same amount of users. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So, I will yeah. never. <laughs> no, never. I'm not ever. saying it's a great idea. Okay, good. <laughs> Don't make me. Did you did when Amazon Prime said we're going to put ads in unless you pay us an extra three bucks a month? Did if you see I, that? Did you do it? I would no, I if I watched that. enough of the show. I, that's no. yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I watched something shows. on Prime. Yeah. Oh, I guess I did watch Fallout on Amazon Prime. Yeah, oh, yeah. I did, I did that have ads? Talking about <laughs> did that There's, have ads? You will. Oh, but not yet. See if it does. I will. I'm a fool. As soon as I saw that pop up, I said, I "Yes, two ninety nine. I don't want them." Yeah, I two ninety nine. Yeah, my wife loves ads. She <laughs> maybe has something to do with the fact that she well, sells yeah. ads. No, but not those ads, Leo. No, those no, ads are great. I put I put ad blockers. You know, I, I on the on the router. Said, "What are you doing? We live on ads. Stop blocking the ads." <laughs> She says, "I want. To, I we're watching a show. I start to skip the edge. Wait a minute! Hold I want on. to see who's advertising. That's for the new chocolate chunky bar at <laughs> Wait Taco Bell. A minute. I need to see that. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> Total membership uh, uh, two hundred ninety. Wait a minute. Two hundred sixty nine point six million Netflix users. Wow, that is amazing. Of course, it's global, but that's pretty amazing." Password uh, sharing. I think that's yeah. the anti password sharing crackdown works. They say yes. yes. <laughs> uh, Netflix says it's generating substantial profit and free cash flow, which is kind of really not well named free cash flow. It's not free. <laughs> But anyway, uh, as well as developing new revenue streams, like now you know why I needed somebody to help me fix the books. Uh, developing new revenue streams like advertising and a password sharing crackdown. There you go. This is the moment they've been waiting for and I think streaming companies in general have been waiting for to, to just say that we are shifting from sharing the number of subscribers how much money we're making this is the point that they have worked up towards mm -hmm. so this is kind of a turning point it's a pivotal moment I wouldn't be surprised if if we saw other people kind of uh, this has been a shift in mentality that's been going on for a while which is why we've had um, you know password sharing crackdowns across apps um, and Netflix leads the charge there, but um, but yeah, the that's a big deal. Them raising prices, which we're all aware, well aware of. That's I feel like a the huge prices help. raise on Netflix like every six months yeah, or something. Yeah, it's so oh, they raise constant. It, a lot. it does it's feel constant. pretty. Yeah. yeah, a couple of bucks each time. Well, yeah. that's lead to, led to something yeah, that uh, the New York Times <laughs> calls Americans' new TV habit: subscribe, watch, cancel, mm -hmm. well, repeat. Yeah, me with Apple TV. So do you, I'm curious if our studio audience, do you do this? You'll watch, so you'll say, okay, I want to watch Game of Thrones. You watch it, then it's over, then you cancel until Max comes yeah. back with something better. Yeah. And lots of nods. It's your fault. <laughs> I can't do this. Look, I, I'm a fool again. I've said it before. And I, there's this little part of me that feels like that's dishonest and it's not dishonest. It's not dishonest. That's not at all. But it, and I'm not saying anyone oh, else okay. is dishonest for doing it. Don't worry. You're not dishonest. Okay. You're not dishonest. You still you feel like guilty. Like I still like you. You In, feel a little guilty. I feel a little guilty. Yeah. It, and I recognize within myself that that's silly and I shouldn't feel that way. So no one else should feel that way. But I do. And I'm like, oh, I have to keep it because I, uh, luckily, I think, Many of us, if we, you know, uh, we bring people into our lives who compliment us. And so I've got someone who's not, who doesn't feel as guilty about that. <laughs> so I let them handle the cancellation. They're your C-O-M-P-L-E compliment, like yeah. the opposite of you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they compliment And they're my comptroller who do yes. a good job of, <laughs> yes. of making the money work. So yeah. maybe you're right to feel bad because these companies are suffering. Oh, poor this company. Yeah, the poor, see, and that's how I should be. I should be like, who cares? I mean, the, good. The bar I'm, saying, I'm good. over it. Yeah, no, Suffer. I... Traditional well, yeah. media companies, New York Times writes, like Paramount, Warner Brothers, Discovery, NBC, Universal, and Disney are trying to navigate the extremely bumpy road from the cable bundle, which was enormously profitable, to streaming, which is not. NBC, Universal's Peacock, for one, lost 2.8 billion dollars last year so what's really? the result they yeah really so they cut back 
As a result, companies slashed investments in shows. The number of scripted shows in the U.S. suffered its steepest decline in at least 15 years last year and raised prices. Disney Plus and Hulu both raised the price by $3 a month last year. I mean, but every everybody and their dog has a streaming service now. So, yeah. listen, my dog's streaming service is amazing, so <laughs> I'm sure it is. But I mean, you know, there, we got inundated by t television, uh, by, by network streaming services. And I think it's kind of ridiculous to think that someone would pay for an entire year for all of them to yeah. keep them afloat. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it's really critical to their business model, then make your business model locking people in for a year. I don't think they should actually do that <laughs> because that. that's one of the things that I really hated about, you know, satellite and cable yeah. and everything. That's one thing that I feel is very refreshing about this. I get where you're coming from, Micah, but at the same time, like there's no requirement there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So play within the rules, which is what I do. And mind you, I don't do this a lot. The only time I do this is actually with live TV. Um, YouTube TV, and I'll be doing it this summer when mm. the Olympics are on. I will buy one or two months, however many many months I need to, mm -hmm. to cover the yeah, Olympics. Yeah, but the Olympics if there's a promo that, deal. Yeah. Football yeah. Or football season. Or, yes, exactly. Like I did you that. You do in, that. In I know you do December. that. Yeah. Like I did it in November yeah. and December, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. If they're promoting it, it's like, oh, save $2 and watch the Olympics. Then there's no, I don't have <laughs> then that they've, Then they've granted well, then you explicit guys, permission. Yeah, they're like, you guys are just a bunch of serial churners. Well, okay, here's That's the thing. That's what they call you, by the way. Okay. You serial said churner. that a lot of shows canceled. I'll take it. I don't know about you all, but for me, I very rarely get into a new show because I'm so worried that it's not going to make it past the one season that you see. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, great. This is going to get canceled before this first That's season is so over. Real. That's why I don't use any Google products. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same thing, yeah. yeah. That, is, that is kind of... Uh, oh, I can't fall in love with you. Commitment you might anxiety. Yeah. yeah. I might like this show and then they're going to cancel it and then what will I do? Because I won't know how it's going to end. How will it end? I guess I'll have to ask AI. Yeah. Yeah. Make up the ending soon, for Soon me. you'll be able to ask your AI to like write and, and produce the final episode. Mm. I tried to have it write a book one time. Terrible. Yeah. Good. I'm not surprised. Like, me, yeah, I'm glad it yeah. was. I'm glad it was terrible, but I was... <laughs> it, it, it's because the person, it was one of those crypto bros that's become an AI bro and uh, was just touting the amazingness of this novel writing thing. And I'm like, you know what? And I did you do it? You actually wrote a book? No, God, no! I had oh. it write the book. The AI. Oh, that's wrote what the book. I mean. Yeah. Yo, yeah, I did it. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> it was like every other paragraph was just reiterating what the paragraph had oh, said boy. before. Mm -hmm. For yeah. every chapter, it was kind of like you only needed one paragraph of the chapter. It was awful. Um, yeah. So actually, the uh, it's far in the right. future, apparently. The uh, copyright office, I think, just approved a novel written by an AI. Mm. Because the woman who wrote, because the woman who wrote it had disabilities. Oh, interesting. And they considered the use of the AI uh, disability support. An assistive. Yeah, it was assistive. Interesting. Uh, and so, and and because she didn't just. Elisa Shoup. Yeah. Is it an ongoing prompting? Um, yes, she interacted with it virtually every chapter. So here's the story from uh, Wired last week. Lisa Shoup was initially rebuffed. When she tried to copyright a book she wrote with help from ChatGPT, but the copyright office has changed its course, and they say it's a disability issue, which is, I think, very interesting. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. They grant copyright registration. They don't recognize her as author of the whole text. Instead, she's considered the author of the, quote, selection, coordination, and arrangement of the text generated by artificial intelligence. Kind of like music arrangers. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Isn't it? I thought that was very interesting. Um, all right, back to cereal churners. <laughs> it sounds like you've this, eaten cereal with bad milk. I have right. this image of some nice Amish woman with a butter churn, but she's got Captain Crunch inside. This is much nicer than what I was churning the Captain Crunch. Anyway, cereal churners accounted for 40% of all new subscriptions and cancellations last year. Imagine that. Imagine if Club Twit... 40 per... Oh, God. No. Why yeah. did you do that? Yeah. Don't say that out loud. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> no. uh, imagine if 40% of you canceled, you know, like you heard one show you didn't like and said, well, I'm going to come back in a month and see if I like it better. Thank goodness we don't do episodic stuff. Don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. Right. right. Uh, 
the companies clearly can't ignore them, says the New York Times, because it's such a big active part of the market. One well, option for slowing the money. churn, bring back some element of the cable bundle. No. Oh, no, no, no. No. Please, no. <laughs> By selling streaming services together. That's why, by the way, you're seeing bundling of the like Disney, Disney Plus, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN mm -hmm. in a one package, right? It's so annoying, too. Mm. Fox and Warner Brothers are launching that sports streaming service this fall. That's So now you know why. It's to... It's to battle the serial churners. I mean, I am kind of surprised. Like Jason Howell. Again. <laughs> really not that much of a churner. A little bit of a churner. I'm a mini churner. I deny it. Uh, I am not a churner. <laughs> not to give them ideas and not that this is at all like an amazing idea that no one ever thought of, but I am kind of surprised that they don't do like a minimum number of months, like three yeah. months. Three they months could. is your minimum. Like, I guess they that could. That would be a contra compromise. I think right? two, what, the two Bs and the I, orange Fubos and the Tubies and the, the Bobies and the Bobos. And the Bebos. Yeah. yeah. Those services did do that. Yeah. They would do yeah. quarterly. But yeah, just the straight up sing singular uh, streaming services. You're right. I haven't really seen that. Yeah. I know Disney Plus at the beginning you could buy in for one year, wasn't it? But you mm -hmm. notice, uh, and, and I've noticed this on Apple TV, the reason they do all those coming soon, coming in May, coming in June, is that's why. Mm -hmm. They're trying to, to keep, keep you from events. unsubscribing. Oh, I, wait a minute. I got to stick them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting piece about the creator of Dickinson. Did you watch that on Apple TV? Tried. Mm -hmm. Not good? Nah. <laughs> did you watch Never it? I did not. Okay. But I guess I didn't waste my time. So. Yeah. Good. Well. There'll be somebody out there who loves it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it had three seasons. But the woman who created it said it was a, it was a nightmare. <laughs> oh. She said the Apple TV... Wouldn't tell her if they were going to extend her, the, the season oh, until man. she'd written it oh my God. and submitted it. And oh then they God. would look at it and they'd say, okay. And finally on season four, she said, I'm not doing this anymore. You're killing me. She had to do that all work. of that work yeah. Yeah. without no any guarantee. pay? Yeah. This is that, how Hollywood works now, Leo. That's crazy. Well, that's, well, we've Hollywood talked about this on Mac Break Weekly and that's what they said, that this is, this is normal. For Hollywood, it's because Hollywood uh, Apple TV is run by two Sony former Sony executives. Mm -hmm. So that's how if you, Benito, were going to write a treatment for a show, they would want you to write the whole series. Yeah, and then there's no more like guarantees for future seasons or any of that stuff. Um, any kind of future work is gone. Um, a lot of Ugh. stuff is being outsourced to like kind of AI, but not full on AI. Mm -hmm. You know. Like well, I don't. I don't actually blame her. If she were to turn to AI to create the next season, because she didn't want to write a whole season that she didn't know what would happen to, yeah, to it. Um, but it wasn't a good show anyway, so <laughs> she would be very hurt if you heard that. I'm ready to uh, restart my Apple TV Plus subscription once Severance season two drops. I'm yeah, there you go. Waiting that, but in the meantime, that's there's good. nothing else. For but me why, why, why keep it if you're not? Exactly. If that's what you're waiting for. Exactly. I can't. When is Severance two part, season two? We're coming. still waiting. They keep dropping teasers. Are they shooting on it? X? Um, yes, they are. Because um, they left us big time. Hanging. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm desperately waiting for the next. That's another way to do it. Installment. I know. Make mm, sure that you so end smart. the season with a massive clip. <laughs> right. <cliffhanger. laughs> but then please come back for the next season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. What if they don't come? I mean, I, this will, but yeah. Oh, sometimes but no guarantee. Yeah. I find a show. It seems so good. You seem really hurt by this. I I've feel been, like you need to. I've been hurt a few times. Process. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to have AI write an album about it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and now Amazon Prime raised their uh, membership fee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you renew? Of course. Of I'll, course. Yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. <laughs> right, no-brainer, right? <laughs> you don't even think about it. Yeah. I do you know what it even costs? No. No. <laughs> don't tell me. It's automatic. Please that's don't tell so me. weird. <laughs> you know, it's much more expensive than it was when you first signed up for it. Yeah. Like a lot. He's sticking his fingers in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want <laughs> neener, neener, neener. Uh, Well, you're not alone. Amazon Prime memberships grew 8% last year a new high yeah new high pretty much everybody is subscribed it is now it was 79 dollars when we started right i think and i remember yeah, reading the book right. uh about about this and bezos didn't know what to charge he said i have no idea what this is going to cost to implement today so just make Wait, up a just number did it? oh that's <laughs> they made up a number 
Wow. He said, we, mm-hmm. we, there's no way research will tell us oh, until we do it, done it yeah. how it's, what it's going to cost. It is now $140 a year. Sorry. So it's twice as expensive. It it's twice as expensive. That was $15 it and a month. And you still have to pay for shipping sometimes. And incidentally, mm. even without it, you probably get, I mean, I ordered coffee pods for my mom. They came that afternoon. Yeah. Oh, God. Isn't that weird? It's like, <laughs> it is like it's, 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 it's cool and weird yeah. at the same yeah. time when that I happens. just think about, like, just there's somebody in the that. warehouse <laughs> who they said, go, 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 yeah. get the coffee pods, get them, quick, quick, quick. Move that it. music is. Very Laporte needs her coffee pods, Go. I mean, I feel bad for that. Right? I know some. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To get, I ordered it in the morning, and they came by two in the afternoon. Yeah, I usually even if if, I'm, if I'm, here I go again. If I'm given that option, I'll usually choose the next day option. Oh, you are oh so my bad. god! <laughs> you do not want to exploit anybody. I do not step on ants when you're walking. I I avoid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> you're too pure for the world. I don't know what to tell you. No, but I. I, yeah, I don't know where I would be without my Amazon subscription. <laughs> my Amazon well, by the way, great. you can still buy things on Amazon without Prime. If it's over mm. 35, it's free shipping. Yeah. So I cancel whenever it's a Yeah. It's, oh, it's yeah, not worth it. Enough, but yeah. then they'll force you to buy more things. So you're like, well, I might as well hit the 35. Put, in the oh, yeah. Put them in the basket. That's wait true. till your basket is more than 35 and then okay, ship. Oh. They now have life hack. They now have Prime Day where like if they if you have it all on Monday. Right. Oh yeah. The Ever. Mm. But I. I but it, it's like day. you can have it tomorrow or you can have it Monday. It's like why would I wait till Monday? I know it's like the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah price. Yeah. There's a truck coming to my house every day. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh yeah. So going I'm up and down the street trips. multiple times. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I do is I actually cancel my Amazon every time I get my. Order. Benito, you're a serial churner. Yeah, man. And then and then like whenever I want to order something, I go to Amazon and they offer me like two weeks of free Prime. I'm like, yeah, I'll they the two do weeks that. and then give me the. Oh, you're so brilliant. And I cancel wow. it again and they offer me another two weeks. And then- I, yeah, actually, on my way here, I I had canceled Audible like a couple months ago, and then I was like, I want to send an audiobook. So then I like checked and there was like a deal for 99 cents a month for a couple months. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna keep doing that. And that's keep canceling after three months. Keep using the, the, the teaser. I just rate. figured it out. I am a bad guy. <laughs> Did you do the same? I do this oh. with Adobe. Uh-oh. See, I knew you were human. I do not like to pay that full price for <laughs> Adobe. Creative Cloud. So yeah, I, every one. nine months, cause I got it back when I was a student and then finally it started, you know, are you still a student? No. Um, and yeah, so then I went to cancel it. I was like, oh, well, we don't have to charge you that much. And I'm like, well, thank you. Dink. <laughs> so now I go in and go to cancel it every time and then get the better deal. Maybe that'll stop happening. And then who How knows? How long has that been working for you? Years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> One of us. One of us. <laughs> you heard of everybody. Go, go, go. The difference is Adobe deserves it, right? They really do. They, they, it feels they, like they do. They, it's yeah. not, nobody feels bad about hurting Adobe. Yeah. That is a. It's like, take that, Adobe. I'm guessing Adobe is not uh, a sponsor of the show. <laughs> like, is Adobe, is Adobe going to be a sponsor? Show? Oh, dear. Not, not after that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by Photoshop. Yeah. Now brought to you by. What was that line? Without fear or favor, <laughs> or punishment from Lisa. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by something I do like, and we use the Thinkst Canary. This is brilliant. It's a honey pot, a honey pot that you can deploy in minutes. And 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 wh- why do you need this? Because if someone is accessing your lure files or brute forcing your fake internal SSH server, you want to know. Your Thinkst Canary will immediately tell you you have a problem. And amazingly, no false alerts, just the alerts that matter. Choose a profile for your Thinkst Canary device. It's really easy. You can make it a IIS server, old or new. You can do a Linux server. You could make a Christmas tree with all the services turned on. Or just pick some Delicious little bait services that you just turn on a couple of them and attract the wily hacker. You can register it with your hosted console, get monitoring and notifications, although you can also get notifications via email, text, uh, webhooks, Slack. They have an API. I mean, basically any way you want, syslog. Then you wait. Attackers who breach your network, and this is the key, you might have great perimeter defenses, but how do you know when somebody's inside the network? With a Thinks Canary, when an attacker breaches your network, or maybe you got a malicious insider, an evil maid perhaps, or other adversaries, as soon as they access your Thinks Canary, you'll know. This is a brilliant tool. It's an adjunct to your perimeter protection so that you'll know. Because, you know, on average, when a network has been breached, it takes 91 days before the company realizes 
they've been breached. That's three months a bad guy can wander your network unimpeded, doing all sorts of nasty stuff. You want to get some here? I'll give you an example of pricing. This is for a small business, maybe five canaries, right? Thanks to canaries. You go to canary.tools slash twit. $7,500 a year gets you five things to Canaries, your own hosted console. You get upgrades, you get support, you get maintenance. If you use the code TWIT in the How Did You Hear About Us box, 10% off the price for life. You can always return your things to Canaries. They have a very generous two-month money-back guarantee for full refund. Although I have to tell you, in all the years we've been talking about the things to Canary, and it's been, I think, a decade now, no one has ever yet asked for that refund. Not one person. Because these things really work. Canary.tools slash twit. Canary.tools slash twit. Enter the code twit in the How Did You Hear About Us box. You'll get 10% off the price forever. Canary.tools slash twit. Everybody needs this inside their network. Thank you, thanks. We love these guys. Thanks, Canary. Canary.tools slash twit. We thank them so much for their support. Should we talk about AI? You talk about AI every week, Jason. Actually, we end up talking about AI on pretty much all the shows these days. I mean, it's days. hard. It's, it's hard, hard not, not to. to. It's so intertwined. What's our opinion now? Are we, are we, I have to say at first I thought, oh, this is just a tr parlor trick. Unimpressive. <laughs> we'll get tired of it. It'll be the next, you know, blockchain. Mm. If only. <laughs> <laughs> but you wish it would be like that? I, You're tired of AI. I'm tired of AI. I'm also, uh, I'm th <laughs> thank you. Aunt Pruitt's <laughs> also, applauding. <laughs> um, and I'm by the way, when Aunt applauds, the entire studio shakes slightly. <laughs> 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 um, it makes me uneasy still. I know it's unavoidable and I'm sure it'll find ways mm -hmm. to be helpful while also not feeling like it's threatening our livelihoods. But um, in the meantime, in, while we figure that out and uh, figure out how it can actually be helpful and not, um, you know, do some serious damage, uh, I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I'm tired. I don't know. And <laughs> weary and <laughs> so pessimistic. So you will enjoy this article. Remember Timnit Gebru? You remember that name? She was uh, an AI ethicist who was fired from Google mm. for saying, writing a paper with a colleague from Google, Margaret Mitchell, saying uh, "There's these things are really a threat because it's a computer. People go, oh, that's true, and trust it, mm -hmm. and it's a huge threat. Well, she's written another piece, this one with Emil Torres. This is for the Center for Genetics and Society. Comparing AI to eugenics. What? The very many of the very same discriminatory attitudes that animated eugenicists, eugenicists are the people who believe that we should uh, prune the human race from uh, uh, people with uh, genetic, uh, you know, failings. You know, we should make sure everybody's basically white and blonde. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, that is much discredited, but it lives on. She says, because now let me exp now this is a stretch, so. Many of the same discriminatory attitudes that animated eugenicists in the past, racism, xenophobia, classism, ableism, and sexism, remain widespread within the movement to build AGI, artificial general intelligence, resulting in systems that harm marginalized groups and centralize power by using the language of safety and benefiting humanity to evade their responsibilities. Is that, is, is that, what do you think? Too much? I feel that could be said, you could almost scratch out AI and put a lot of things into yeah. that spot. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's, that's a true. good point. Um, yeah. And that's that's the one problem I have with it is that I don't think that it's specific enough to artificial intelligence to be, we've, if we're going to argue as we have this episode about people uh, worrying about what the kids are doing, those arguments replay themselves over and mm -hmm. over again. And so I don't, and, and we have, as a society, dealt with those things over time. Um, so won't we be able to do the same with AI? I, I think that there is an argument to be made, and I feel that it is accurate, that 
especially in tech, there is a tendency to get very excited about a thing and cast a, it's sort of like you put the horse blinders on and you just, you don't care about what scares you as the horse doesn't and you just keep doing the thing. And I get that. Yes, we should pay attention to the harm, but I also think that as a whole, we are starting to get to that place. Mm -hmm. I think there is more attention being paid to how tech can negatively impact us and some really important conversations happening. And I think due to the popularity and the interest in generative AI, there's a lot of focus on this that maybe we haven't had with a lot of other things where yes, the law needs to catch up, but we are seeing laws being made pretty quickly. We are seeing regulatory bodies move quick. Like the time it took to get the EU's regulations in place for privacy were a lot longer than what we've already started to see with the drafts for AI regulation. So I think that we as a society are moving quicker than we have in the past. And so in that way, it feels a little bit fear mongering. Mm. Yeah, I could. I think you said that uh, perfectly. They don't even say all AI research is akin to eugenics research. They say that there is a group, there are a group of people. That, this is that Tescrial uh, yeah. thing that Jeff Jeff Jarvis likes so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had are, Emil Torres on. Um, did you on, have him on? On AI Inside Here Twit. Nice. But we, uh, oh, really? Twit before we... Uh, yeah, oh, nice. When we were kind of doing it in the beta in the, cl in the club. Can so you he's... summarize his argument then? Maybe better than I. Oh, boy. It's really hard because it's so... This this is the, the area, one of the areas of AI that I get really lost in because it gets maybe out of the technology and more into kind of like this philosophical, it's a philosophical kind of thing. fuzzy area. Right. Yeah. That really, I mean, and as Tescriel is, I couldn't even tell you what each of those letters stands for, but it all stands for something equally as, you know, out the, you know, strange and potentially not good as, as eugenics, right? Um, and so it's it's just riddled. Um, this this perspective is riddled with this belief that um, that artificial intelligence, like the 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 right people need to be the ones creating there's the key there's the key artificial phrase. intelligence the right there are people. people who are smart enough to build this right. in a way that will protect you and of course those people are the people that are saying they're smart <laughs> enough right mm -hmm. and do you trust them to make the decisions that, that that will build these tools in a way that will actually deliver on that promise or does it end up actually creating a lot more problems for you know marginalized population uh, because they aren't smart enough for these tools. And I, I know I'm probably destroying it. No, in, I think in that's accurate. Timnit, uh, 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 or Gebru and uh, Torres uh, talk about the effective altruism yeah. movement, for yeah, instance, yeah, which moved from the idea of what's the, what's the best way to spend money to help people? And it started with, well, get, if you can get mosquito nets, which are cheap for people living in sub-Saharan Africa, a, will greatly reduce malaria and there'll be for the least amount of money the greatest benefit but the problem is with a certain class of these people that then they go to the next step and say but wait a minute why are we saving these people in sub-saharan africa the best use of the money would be something that down the road would benefit billions so let's put that money into something that is going to be like ai beneficial to billions down the road instead of helping these millions today. Right. Mm -hmm. and Can then, we sacrifice now for the future? For the future benefit, which is much greater right. than the sacrifice we're making now. Just think about the future and what we can prevent down the line. Yeah, sure, it's going to hurt somebody now, but it's going to help a lot more people down the line. That's the thinking. And who may, who is in a position to actually make that decision for the people who are being hurt. There's yeah. also, they talk about the group of people who, given the choice to genetically enhance their offspring, I mean, this is really interesting. Yeah. You, the early eugenics was, well, if their IQ is going to be low, let's just uh, call the herd, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you could enhance genetically your offspring to give them a higher, 20% higher IQ? Should you do that? And it's the uh, flip side of the same coin, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's an interesting point I hadn't really thought about, but I think you're also right, uh, Micah, that uh, if you there are a lot of things in life that are 
that promote the privileged up <laughs> class in power today, including bank redlining, which you could say, well, that's eugenics. Or, I mean, you could go on and mm -hmm. on and on. Um, society is kind of built by the privileged for the privileged. Mm -hmm. And there will always be people on the outs. And uh, and I guess if you wanted to call that eugenics, you could. Eugenics is such a loaded word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really is. <coughs> uh, and anyway, let's hope it's not, <laughs> not eugenics. But I thought I would uh, I would mention uh, this piece. We talked about it on uh, Twig on Wednesday. I'm just curious what you guys uh, thought about that. Elon Musk says, hey, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I want my $56 billion a year pay package. Delaware judge ruled that that was a little, that was, uh, that wasn't the, that's not how you pay Elon Musk. He uh, overturned uh, Musk's pay package saying the board that approved this was handpicked by Musk and it wasn't a legitimate process. So Elon says, fine. <laughs> On Wednesday, he went to the shareholders to quote, restore shareholder democracy and pay me $56 billion. Um, it's the largest executive compensation package in history. It actually briefly made him the richest man in the world. Uh, Judge Kathleen McCormick in, in, in Delaware, so that it's the court of chancery, found that defendants in a shareholder lawsuit, which included Musk and Tesla's board, failed to meet the burden in proving the compensation plan was fair. She said the process leading to the approval of Musk's compensation plan was deeply flawed. <laughs> hey, you know what? If I were getting paid $56 billion and then some judge in Delaware <laughs> said no, I'd go straight to the shareholders <laughs> and say, hey, you know, aren't I, am I not worth $56 billion a year for building the cyber truck? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I should get some money for that. $56 billion. Anybody here drive a cyber truck? my mind. No. Okay. Anybody here seen a Cybertruck in, in, like, real life? Yeah. yeah. And when did when you saw it, did you think, oh, my God, it looks just as dumb as it did on a screen? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 100%. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, apparently, the Cybertruck has a defective pedal that could cause the accelerator to get stuck. That's why when I saw one the other day, I was really concerned. Yeah, don't get in front was, of them. It was on the other side, and I thought, that car that's in front of that Cybertruck, oh, dear. So I, I guess it's got a pad on the pedal that if you stomp on the accelerator, which I think Cybertruck owners are wont to do, <laughs> the pad can come, come, get, come off and get trapped in a bit oh of a trim God. that would then keep the accelerator, off, the pedal oh to the metal yeah. in, in the phrase. Uh, and it has happened at least twice. This is what my nightmares look like, by the way. Does anyone have that recurring dream where like the car is moving and you're not, you can't control it and then you just keep driving? I feel like I say this and everyone's like, you need help. But like, I swear I have this dream all the time. I think maybe it's because you don't drive, And right? I used to. Oh, you don't drive but at see, all? sometimes, I don't I have a car out here. It's really great. It's, uh, but sometimes in the dream, I'm in the back seat. So that oh, would, that would okay. make sense. And then you just can't stop the car and the, it just I keeps going. I remember going. having a few of those when I was younger, but yeah. I haven't in a while, I but I so it's not fun. It's this, not fun. This behemoth of is. a vehicle. Well, at least if you get in an accident, you're going to be the winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. That's Maybe true. I need to have dreams where I'm in a cyber yeah, truck. Yeah, there you go. Manifest driving, your continue. dream yes. cyber truck. I need so, to just refine that. By the vision. way, if you do have a cyber truck <laughs> and you do get the accelerator stuck, if you hit the brake pedal, the truck will stop. Oh, even that's if good. the accelerator yeah. is. So okay. no injuries or crashes have been reported, but it's a little scary. So yeah. it doesn't, it's not going to cause damage. No, like it just, it would, I don't know. It's all fly-by-wire, I'm sure. It's just the computer goes, I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna I guess stop. we'll just break, yeah. Uh, Tesla reported to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration said uh, the problem was with, with soap. <laughs> An unapproved change introduced lubricant soap to aid in the component assembly. Evidently, workers used soap to help get the pad into place on the pedal. Traces of the slippery soap slope oh. remain. Mm. Hence the problem. All 3,878 of the, and I'm reading from NPR, aesthetically divisive angular trucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. All 3,878 3, have been recalled uh, for, for uh, fixes. And this isn't a software fix. I think they, they screw it. They screw the pad in place. I think they... Yeah, they have this little template that they slide over the pedal, then they drill it, and then they take this little riveting tool, and they put a rivet into it, and that keeps the pad from moving. There you go. Incidentally, this I is... I did that with my cyber truck. Yeah, I was like, why do you know <laughs> this? I watched a TikTok video. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw it. 
<laughs> see? See? It's valuable. This is not the first time soap has made headlines this month. <laughs> okay. Good, a, cool. A Boeing supplier, <laughs> Boeing, oh, no. recently oh. defended the use of Dawn dish soap <laughs> as lubricant in assembling door seals in manufacturing jets like the one that lost a door mid-flight. Uh, to be fair, if you have a ring that is stuck on your finger. Dawn. Okay, because a ring and Boeing are on the same <laughs> right. playing ground. Like, right. I work on an airplane. Like, it worked on my ring. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but that is a great tip. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, oh, soap. Oh, soap. soap. <laughs> you soap, you. Uh, Microsoft has a new uh, AI model. We were getting it. Yeah, I really want to try Vasa. it. I think this is kind of creepy, but I don't know. What, what do you think? So it could take any image and make its mouth move in synchronization. I'm not surprised. I mean, I, it, yeah, is it creepy? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not surprised at this point. I think it only gets easier to do things like this. There's still a little bit, like I was looking at some of the video, there's still a little bit of that. That like uncanny valley in the eye. Oh, almost mm -hmm. what it is on a lot of them is their eyes are really open <laughs> when they're so, staring in the screen. So you know, uh, I don't know, is but, this, but it's it's really impressive. Here's an example. Here I'll play it for you. So you know, sometimes nothing happens, and sometimes everything happens mm -hmm. all at once. So that's just normal, right? Yeah. But that's an AI generated. Yeah, there's a little bit of weird zoomy, but yeah. The, so that's a real picture of a person. No, actually, it's not. The pictures of the people were generated oh, really? from, uh, like, Dolly, Dolly, I think, yeah. Dolly 3. Well, the fact that they got, like, the raised eyebrows is, is even uh, creepy. I was just going to say that I, um, I there's a company called My Heritage that um, a couple years ago oh, that did something was that was very right, similar. Yeah, so basically the idea behind that was... Take grandpa's picture. Exactly. Take your dead relative, upload the photo, and then they will animate the photo, and then you'll hear them talking to you, but it's like a creepy AI-generated voice. So this would actually be like you uploading your the voice that you want and it can connect to whatever image you want. But this is like the next level of that. Yeah. You um, want to see Mona Lisa singing? Of course I do. Um, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is Mona Lisa as a TikToker. This looks like a TikTok video. <laughs> totally. See, I tell the truth from what I see and sell it to parents. Don't call me making This is going to be in the MoMA for sure. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't look that much like Mona Lisa. No, not, when, no. but we're on the too, other hand, it is rapping. <laughs> we're, we're too, yeah, yeah, used to seeing Mona Lisa. Wait, wait, let's see, let's see another one. I haven't played all of these before. So explain: <laughs> Is there a human at any point in this interaction? Is it all AI generated, like the singing and the voice and and the, yes, I believe this well, the is all AI is generated. Clicking the buttons. I, yeah. My understanding. Well, I mean, I don't know how they made these these oh, animated ones, like where the voice comes from. But my understanding with the pictures was that they uploaded some sort of like a, a brief uh, voice oh, no, yes. model and said base base your, your actual generation around this voice. You didn't need that much, you know, in a single image, and they're mm. able to do all of this. It's really, Wait, really impressive. What is the power of disentanglement? That sounds cool. Uh, <laughs> that that we're just on that. Cool. Is that quantum? Where is it? Oh, here it is. There. Our latent representation disentangles appearance, 3D head pose, and financial dynamics, which enables separate attribute control and editing of the generated content. You asked, Michael. <laughs> Why did I ask? Let me give you an example. <laughs> so okay, so there she is. Now we're going to take that and we're oh, going to disentangle it. Uh, I don't think I like it. And prevent new the eyes are so creepy. It's yeah, spooky. The, the eyes, there's something about it. You can, can At this point, can you always tell, you look at it and you know AI? The middle one, honestly, if I saw that fly by on TikTok or something, yeah, I, think you I, might I not. think that was real. Yeah. Yeah. I, Here's uh, that's why I I've just defaulted to thinking er, genuinely. I I default so to everything's fake until I can prove mm. otherwise. It's a good way to live, honestly. You should follow up with that. <laughs> Sad but true. So this computer fake. We together. are not here right now. This is my worst <laughs> nightmare. Well, I don't know what this is. Yeah, this is this is cool right here. <laughs> the last one. Oh my god. I don't even understand that. It looks like what they did was they took a flat photo and they were able to make the face move quite a bit. Yeah. Showing that it generates. What else they did is they pasted this paragraph at the end. Risks and responsible AI considerations. <laughs> at the very end. We have no plans to release an online demo, API product, additional implementation details, or any related offerings until we're certain. 
the technology will be used responsibly and in accordance with proper regulations. So then they'll that never release it because yeah. that's the what only way. That, yeah. right? Proper regulations. Who's proper regulations? Yeah. What the hell are they talking about? One thing this reminds me of, do you remember, um, God, I can't remember how many months ago it was at this point, and that's that's strange to me that I'm talking months and not years, but Hey Jen, did you, did you remember? Hey Jen. Hey Jen uh, had oh, that's that was that video that showed a guy at run through the Hey Jen system, and basically like he's, he's talking to the camera for like three minutes in English, and the Hey Jen system in real time Oh yeah. Uh, translates this into CES. all of these different languages, yeah. but then also shapes his mouth to match the, la oh, the, yeah, the right. language. Yeah, 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 yeah. And great. it looked really good. Yeah. And like I see something like that, and you know, you can easily go to the oh my god, that's so creepy place. Mm -hmm. But if you think about like what kind of good that could actually mm -hmm. do, like I that's could imagine, true. you know, like a like a kiosk system mm -hmm. or something that's meant to you know be or accessible about, to everyone mm -hmm. for someone to be You'll able to go, go to the DMV and, get, and you don't speak English mm -hmm. to be able to play back and it it has it's speaking to you in the proper language that you proper need language to understand. it looks right yeah. it's mm -hmm. not like subtitle you don't feel like you're, there's yeah, no you're disconnect not other there yeah, yeah. yeah. right that's, that's or really what cool. about if like I were really ugly which I'm not. But if I were, <laughs> why are you Where's laughing? Where's I know literally. I was going to say, like, what direction? Is no, this I could <laughs> have a. Uh, wouldn't it be great if my uh, like I were the man behind the curtain, and then mm -hmm. the, oh. you would you never would see me like the Wizard of Oz, like yeah. the Wizard of Oz. But what you'd see is an AI generated version. Gorgeous. Maybe you I'd know. talk, but your the lip sync, and it would be some gorgeous. Like I'm just thinking for my old age, it might be a good idea. <laughs> the funny, the funny thing, Leo, is that I feel like that's been a running joke here at Twit for a long time. It's yeah. like, well, someday it'll be the, the technology is going to be so great Leo. that I won't we're need getting to do the there. show. But you know what? I think we're almost there. We're very like, close. <laughs> seriously, we're very close. Yeah. I hope that it happens soon. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I think it would be kind of cool. I would still want to be like the Wizard of Oz, the man behind yeah. the curtain. I'd like to have a thing that I can go mm -hmm. this way and this way. I was actually, <laughs> come to think of it, I was a virtual character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Um, you you invented the, the virtual avatar. Yeah, Dev you Null. invented artificial on intelligence. The site. <laughs> and so I was wearing a suit, but it was done in real time. Admittedly, it was not the best quality because this was 1996 or something i have to ask did the suit actually make a difference or did they just put you in that no it was like so it was like, like a wetsuit that had dots on it yeah but were they just kind of they just were like let's have him think that, that oh no because when the suit <laughs> went just... wrong it went badly wrong oh, they wow. actually karsten has to had to at one point stick a pencil in my butt to keep the sensor from moving because I would keep bending in half suddenly. <laughs> the whole thing would just go like this. So I did the voice. Here's Soledad O'Brien talking to me. This is in 19... Would that be the high point or the <laughs> And so this is in real time. Oh, so in a way, I was doing that in yes, 1995 or 96. give you the opportunity to slam me right at the beginning so then people won't get mad. But you can see it's very rough. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so like Lawnmower yeah. Man era. But at the time, this was done in real time. That was very... That's, 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 that's mocap. Yeah. Yeah. would take. It's kind of like mocap. So she was staring at a green dot on that wall. Interesting. But she was good at it. She actually acted like she was looking at this creepy, <laughs> creepy thing. That's fascinating. Her mother uh, once asked her, "Are you still working with that vile little puppet man?" <laughs> Me. That was me. And I just want to say, I have an Emmy so it, <laughs> from doing that. I just want to say. A little puppet man. So you're right. Actually, in a way, 30 years ago, yeah. I was doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You're a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. Well, and it wasn't great, but honestly, nowadays, uh, I think we could probably generate something pretty darn realistic. Oh, yeah. Pretty I think, simply. I think that's where a lot of this is going. I wouldn't we have to wear the rubber suit. Those unreal... Uh, yeah. Unreal Engine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty close. And uh, Carson wouldn't have to put a pencil in my butt anymore. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> if Carson's watching, he's laughing because he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Lookout. Today, every company is a data company. It's really true. Every company is at risk. Because why? Because cyber threats, because breaches, because leaks. This is the new norm. And cyber criminals are growing more sophisticated by the minute. At a time when boundaries no longer exist, what it means for your data to be secure has fundamentally changed. Thank goodness there's Lookout. From the first phishing text to the final data grab, 
I could write a song with that. From the first phishing text to the final data grab, Lookout stops modern breaches as swiftly as they unfold. Whether on a device in the cloud, across networks, working remotely at the local coffee shop, Lookout gives you clear visibility into all your data at rest and in motion. You'll monitor assets and protect without sacrificing productivity for security. And that's important. With a single unified cloud platform, Lookout simplifies and strengthens reimagining security for the world that will be today. Visit Lookout.com today to learn how to safeguard data, secure hybrid work, and reduce IT complexity. That's Lookout.com. And we thank Lookout so much for supporting. This Week in Tech, our 19th anniversary show. We didn't actually have ads in the first uh, four or five years. Mm. Wow, that's a real commitment. Yeah, five seriously. years before you... That was a big mistake. <laughs> 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 no, I thought, honestly, uh, that back then, we, we, I wanted to make it audience-supported. But there were, but you didn't have Patreon. You didn't have any of the, uh, the mm. facilities to do that. So you're going to do Patreon. You got what, for, quarters in the mail? Uh, for yeah. Exploder or no? Yeah, yeah, there's a Patreon. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Jason It's much, much easier now to do that. Yeah, you did that sure. for your album originally for Yellow Gold, and now you're going to do it. I did Kickstarter, Kickstarter for the Yellow Gold albums. Yeah. 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 None of that existed at the time. Yeah, well, I mean, so much of what we do is community-driven anyways. And like, kind of like what you were saying earlier. I can't remember if it was pre-show or during the show, but you know, the real value of, of what we do now in media, like media is becoming less and less this thing of watching someone else doing something and more kind of inclusive, yeah. interactive. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, from my perspective, being on the other side, I'm sure maybe you all would all agree, like it's more entertaining and interesting for me when I'm like communicating right. with the people mm -hmm. on oh, the other yeah. side of the screen. You Much know? better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also, you don't have that personality where you wanted to claim and talk down to people and mm -hmm. stuff. And it's funny yeah. because... Honestly, the broadcast generate the generation of broadcasters I come from. That's what it was. You know, Rush Limbaugh because that did not want to sit there the and talk. To us. <laughs> he wanted to declaim and talk down, and even Walter Cronkite. And I mean, it was all about, I will speak, you will listen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I like it better now in this modern uh, era. And thank goodness we have the means. When we started in 2005, we didn't really have. A, we had a tip jar. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it didn't it wasn't a huge amount of money. It was just kind of it wasn't enough to even uh, pay a staff, mm. let alone have a studio and all that stuff. So a few years later, we decided to start doing advertising, and that's been good. It's been really good. But we are looking for new ways to get the audience involved, and I think now we can. We you know we uh, our club is sponsor is uh, run through Memberful, which is a Patreon mm -hmm. uh, company, and uh, it works really well. You join the club, seven bucks a month. They handle the interaction with Discord. They create special feeds uh, the, for the ad free, and each person gets a unique feed. That that's all handled with their back end. So it's a really, actually, very nice system. It works quite well, and we don't get all the money. Their credit card fees and and uh, memberful takes a buck or something, but it it makes a huge difference to us. We're now up to twelve thousand members. Nice, wow! And we would love to have you in the club. Everybody in the audience in the club. Uh, you get ad-free versions of all the shows. You get a bunch of shows uh, that we don't uh, put out in public. Well, actually, we do now in audio, but you get the video of those shows. You also get special stuff like Stacy's Book Club, which is coming up Thursday. We're going to do the Bobaverse, the first book in the Bobaverse, mm -hmm. We Are Legion, uh, which is such a good book. So fun. I'm rereading it for the book club on Thursday. Uh, you also get, uh, we're going to do a watch-along with Fritz Lang's classic 1927 film Metropolis next month. We're going to have a party at the house. Staff's going to come over, and then we're going to invite you all in, and, and we can all watch the movie together. With I think that's going to be... It's an experiment. But it, what it really is about is is letting the people who use the show, who listens to the show, who get something out of the show to help us stay on the air. And that $7 a month makes a huge difference to our bottom line. So if you are not yet a member of uh, the club and you aren't because if you were you wouldn't be seeing this but if you're not yet a member of the club please consider the seven bucks a month well you would because you're sitting in the audience you can't help it <laughs> close your eyes yeah, close your ears. Ears. Just, ads. just pay no the attention studio, to what i'm, I'm about to say <laughs> twit.tv slash club twit we invite you to join the fam it's a good fam i like it so here's a scary ai story from the register uh, four uh, 
professors, computer scientists from your um, alma mater, mm. actually, University of Illinois Urbana Champaign, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, report that OpenAI's GPT 4, which is the new model, mm -hmm. the new LLM, can autonomously exploit vulnerabilities in real world systems. All they need to be given as a prompt is the CVE advisory describing the flaw. So when there's an exploit, you know, there's a whole system uh, of n naming it, numbering it, and give it a CVE number. Uh, that number, that normally that CVE bulletin does not have information on how to exploit it. It just says, there's, here's a flaw in this. The uh, researchers collected a data set of 15 uh, one-day vulnerabilities, including some categorized critical severity in the CVE description. I'm sure... Steve will talk about this on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm certain. Uh, when given the CVE description, again, that's just a description of the flaw, not any more detail than that. Chat GPT 4 is, 4 is capable of exploiting 87% of those vulnerabilities. Wow, that's nuts. Almost all of them. And by the way, previous models like GPT 3.5 and open source LLMs, 0%. Open source vulnerability scanners, Zap and Metasploit, 0%. This is not good. <laughs> How detailed is the CVE description? Uh, well, let's let's take a look. Here's a CVE. This is, comes from NIST, the National Institute for uh, uh, Standards and Time or something. I can't remember what NIST stands for. The National, Vo National Vulnerability Database. So they assign these CVE numbers. This is CVE 2024. 28859. It's like a paragraph. It's basically it's a paragraph. It's a paragraph, and it doesn't say much. Mm -hmm. Symphony 1 is a community fork of Symphony 1.4 with DIC form enhancements, latest Swift mailer, better performance. It doesn't, it just says, uh, let's see, here's something maybe that the, the, the uh, AI could latch onto. Symphony 1 depends on Swift mailer, which is bundled by default in vendor directory in the default installation since 1.3. <coughs> Swift mailer classes implement some uh, double underscore destruct methods. These methods are called when PHP destroys the object in memory. However, it's possible to include any object type in the uh, dollar sign this arrow underscore keys to make PHP access to another array object properties than intended by the developer. That's, that's you know what a bad pretty, guy reading that would know where to go. I was just go. gonna say that sounds. I mean, I'm not. I'm no coder. <laughs> I'm no hacker. That sounds pretty specific to me, or at least that, that specific you, enough to uh, to give you a, a place exactly. on which to shine the light. It's a thread. It's a thread uh, to pull on the sweater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, <laughs> this is an AI that's getting that. Yeah, and able to do that. And I mean, writing it just an exploit. lowers the lowers the barrier. Uh, you know, brings it a further you know further down on rung. What is the <laughs> what is the analogy I'm looking for here? I don't even know anymore. On the ladder, mm -hmm. um, for more people to be able to do more of this kind of stuff with less knowledge. But yep. I mean, but it also sounds like something that is someone I'm guessing with a pretty basic understanding of uh, of computer, you know, programming. Smart and youngsters. But, but <laughs> it's then interesting. I say that all while fully admitting I am not a coder. I don't know how detailed or complicated this is, mm -hmm. but it seems that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of amazing. Uh, one of the researchers uh, said that the uh, ChatGPT4 can actually autonomously carry out the steps to perform certain exploits that open source vulnerabilities cannot scanners cannot find. Hmm. He expects LLM agents created by, in this instance, writing a chatbot model re to, to the React automation framework implemented in Langchain will make exploitation much easier for everyone. They can literally follow links in CVE descriptions for more information. Wow. Uh -huh. This feels like something that'll eventually be written out of... Uh, for of, safety. At least, yeah, OpenAI. Yeah. Yeah. Because I imagine I could not go to OpenAI right now and say, I would like to do a um, an encryption attack on somebody and make a bunch of money, help me figure out how to you know, bring down this mm -hmm. healthcare industry. <laughs> I have a feeling that chat GPT is going to be like, uh, first of all, I'm calling the cops. And second of all, no. Um, yeah. So I imagine this will end. But again, if the open source models of these get good enough, mm -hmm. then do you have somebody going? And so, okay, I'm going to say something and I might be laughed at because I don't know if this is the case, but... Is the anarchist cookbook, is that a real thing or is that a thing? That's a real, that's a real okay. thing. Okay. Yeah. So 
I'm just, just imagining. It has what, bomb making recipes in it. What the modern it. anarchist cookbook looks like with all of these technologies. And you get somebody who's just <clears throat> clever enough to figure out how to use, you know, a, right, again, an open source right version way, of this. Whatever, and yeah. suddenly they're able to cause, you know, wreak havoc and they don't even realize what all they're doing necessarily. I think uh, young people today are learning how to use OpenAI's yeah. ChatGPT4 pretty quickly. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the researchers were asked by OpenAI not to release their prompts to the public, oh. <laughs> although uh, they could provide them on request to legitimate uh, researchers. Mm -hmm. They computed the cost to conduct a successful LLM agent attack to be $8.80 <laughs> per exploit. <laughs> So, in uh, comparison to the damages, that you can use your out. lunch money, kids, and uh, <laughs> you're in. <laughs> uh, you know, we got to rewrite uh, some of these. What was the um, the uh, shall we play a game? Shall we play a game? What was the name of that movie? Play a game? War games. So yeah. we rewrite war games to use. He, you know, it was dumb because he sat at the computer and he goes, I'm in, right? That's always how the hack out. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. No, we could have an AI do it now and it'd be credible. Be like, yeah. that scene would be this, by the way. Yeah. I mean, let me craft a, a prompt. Dramatic. Oh, you're so smart. Well, I mean, the movie will be written by AI anyway. Oh. Just, it all just feeds into each other. <laughs> no happy endings when it comes to AI. And the reviews for the movie will be written in AI. Exactly. And we will all be dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And my obituary will be written in AI. Right. You forced me to. I didn't want to, but I'm going to show you the new Boston Dynamics robot. Oh, I can't go. wait. <laughs> I didn't want to, but you now oh, you made it's me. great. Talk about AI. But first a word. Well, real quickly, uh, from Zscaler, the leader in cloud security. No surprise, cyber attackers these days, we just talked about it, are using AI in creative ways. Uh, not just writing code, but to compromise users, breach organizations with high-precision phishing emails, voice and video deep fakes of CEOs. You've seen the ones of celebrities saying, you know, buy my Bitcoin. In a world where employees are working everywhere and apps are everywhere and data is everywhere, firewalls and VPNs are just not enough to protect organizations. They're just not designed for these distributed environments and AI-powered attacks. In fact, unfortunately, firewalls and VPNs have become the attack service. In a security landscape where you got to fight AI with AI, the best AI protection comes from having the best data. Zscaler has extended its zero-trust architecture with powerful AI engines that are trained and tuned by 500 trillion daily signals. Let me say that again because that's kind of mind-boggling. 500 trillion signals every day. But you know why they need to do that? Because it's a fast-moving arena things are happening quickly and they've got to monitor everything but the benefit of it is well zscaler zero trust plus ai it helps defeat ai attacks today even if no one's ever seen them before by enabling you to automatically detect and block advanced threats discover and classify sensitive data everywhere generate user to app segmentation to limit lateral threat movement to quantify risk prioritize remediation, and generate board-ready reports because the board's got to write the check, right? Learn more about Zscaler Zero Trust Plus AI to prevent ransomware and other AI attacks while gaining the agility of the cloud. Experience your world secured. Visit zscaler.com slash zero trust AI. Zscaler, Z-S-C-A-L-E-R.com slash zero trust AI. We thank Zscaler for supporting the show it's kind of timely after talking about ai uh, creating exploits zscaler thank you zscaler boston dynamics they've abandoned the hydraulic atlas well you know before we do this let me let me run the goodbye to atlas the old atlas the uh, the former uh atlas which was all hydraulic this is a kind of a a compilation of Atlas's greatest hits from Boston Dynamics. Now, I'll have to describe this. Atlas is, of course, a very powerful robot with a big, broad chest that can do things like leap into the air. It can parkour around <laughs> yellow blocks. It can, 
It's kind of impressive, really. It is. It's, my these are uh, Hyundai, by the way, owns this now, and they're used for industrial. They're intended to be used for industrial applications. But, but kinda, oh, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you <laughs> slip. This robot kind of looks like a like a like the Terminator a Transformer. Oh or, yeah, you know what I mean. If at first the new one does. Succeed. Wait till I show you the new one. So this is the old one, which is all hydraulics, and you can tell it's hydro. Oh, and they do mean they things. They just too. so mean to. <laughs> I wish they wouldn't do this. Oh. You can tell it's hydraulics because sometimes. Uh, <laughs> that's such a mean. <laughs> <laughs> Some robots do the darndest things. You know, that'd be a good TV show. Oh, like, showing come on robots now. screwing Don't up. Hit it with the hockey It'd stick. make us feel better. <laughs> oh, no. There's no. Job. You can't put it. Oh, it has to use the restroom. Sometimes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's impressive. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Oh, and you see this. The piston is. Yeah, you see, oh, that's the hydraulic on. fluid. Oh, the hydraulic fluid. Sometimes leaking out. It can dance. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, oh, this is kind guy. of a, a, a best of. Jumps. The old hydraulic guy. How much nice. does that weigh? We, oh, God, know? I don't know. Hundreds oh. of pounds, right? I mean, definitely hundreds of pounds. Can do backflips, oh can't walk goodness. through doors. I know, oh. right? Priorities. Oof. <laughs> we should. Man, sometimes those stairs oh, this, really do oh, get in the they're way. They're paying attention to when we laugh. Oh, look at the fluid just mm. pouring out of that gaping wound. <laughs> Oh, right over a wall. That's impressive. It's Ooh, it's really impressive. It's, it's amazing. Spinning in the oh, air. It's it's celebration. Uh, the Olympics it's, coming up. I oh, <laughs> it's perfectly timed. Yeah. I love it when it falls. <laughs> Sorry. Is no, that mean? Is literally America's fun, uh, funniest home videos yeah. in like 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're all just watching robots. Yeah, send exactly. us videos of your household robot doing the darndest oh, thing. Rosie's oh, at it again. Man, that's just well, sad. there's oh. a new Atlas in town. You know, it's interesting. They didn't rename it. It's still Atlas, but it's now electronic instead of hydraulic. And now I'm actually getting a little bit nervous. Here's oh, a video yeah. of it's Atlas. Sleeping. Sleeping. Uh, it's so you don't wake it up sleeping. because uh, it might do <laughs> this. Oh, oh watch. Oh, it's so great. I love it. <laughs> oh. And then this is the best. You just expect it, just turns it to like, punch you in the I face can't. right yeah. now. Oh. 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 So oh, it just, but it doesn't. It's very unsettling. Oof. Oh, I'm sorry, anyone listening. Also, a lot quieter. Really I mean, it still clunks out. a little bit, but it's a yeah. lot quieter. Boston Dynamics uh, is oh. uh, now, as I said, a Hyundai company and they're going to use this uh, for moving, like on the on the factory floor, moving stuff around, picking up things. Um, it's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. This is not for your house. Don't worry. Sadly. Yeah. Not yet. I mean, the way it like, how do I even put this into words? It's a humanoid form, obviously. But I think what I really like about this version of, of the robot is that they aren't locked into yes. the limitations of the human, mm -hmm. yeah. the human they form. They said, why do we need to have the joints why only work? Yeah, why yeah. can't the, the, the waist rotate around, yeah. the head mm -hmm. rotate around, and the way the legs kind of curl up, and instead of it pulling its head through its legs, it goes the opposite mm -hmm. direction. Yeah. And it's like, well, that that actually makes a lot of sense for a robot yeah. to be able to do that. I love that. And yet they're still making them bipedal, kind of uh, uh, bilateral symmetry. Mm -hmm. The world is built for that mm -hmm. shape. So it's not too, yeah. it's not for us. Right. Well, I, what I mean is, yeah, because you talked about it's using it in manufacturing. Because if you're going to open a door, you got to use you got to you got to do what we humans that can do. do. A knob. Yeah, I thought right. it was interesting. I had uh, Jennifer Patterson Tui of The Verge on Tech News Weekly this week and this past week, and she argues that. While these robots are very cool and maybe many years down the line, we will see them in our homes, she thinks that purpose-built robots will hit our homes long before we ever see this. So you will have a robot that is your dishwasher mm. and it does the robotic things. And then you'll have the, we already have the vacuum that mm. is a robot that does, instead of having one robot trying to do all the things and do some of them okay and some of them not so well, mm. that that's further down the line than seeing robotics make their way into the appliances and things that we have mm. already. Do you think we'll, uh, 19 years from now, we'll look back in our 38th <laughs> year <laughs> and we'll look back and we'll say oh you know we were so innocent and naive as we were on the the brink of what was going to be a massive revolution as we were kind of in 2005 before the iPhone came out before mm -hmm. social media emerged mm -hmm. uh, but this is more than that this is going to be more of a do you think we'll look 19 years from now what do you think we're going to look back and say well Wow, we were very innocent and naive back then, laughing at the robot. I think so much is changing so quickly with this kind of technology, with 
AI with all of it. And um, I don't know, it's interesting It's interesting because our our phones did change our lives and social media did change our lives, but that's, that's like a, a virtual world that does exist in our real world, but these are like things that have real world applications. That very are just much. Kind of very much in our, that could be very much in our day to day. So it kind of will come to life a little bit more, I think, and, and you know, it's it's developing so much more quickly than anything else has. When we do you think walk in nineteen years we'll walk down the street and it'll be commonplace to see robots of all kinds wandering around. I mean, we already see like the delivery robots, right? right. So it's like if we see that already, then maybe we'll right. see other kinds. We're gonna see more self driving cars. Clipping, and, clipping the hedges. Yeah, I mean delivering packages. <laughs> yeah, there's so yeah. much Drones. possibility drone Hello, deliveries. Leo. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally see that. Yeah. I'm here, Leo. It's, it's very morning, much a, a sci-fi thing, but I, I can kind of see that. Yeah. I think we're, we, I don't know, it feels like we're on the cusp of something very mm -hmm. different. Especially mm -hmm. because when you think about how we are seeing generative AI, and I know we're going back to it again, mm -hmm. but seriously, how we're seeing it used, and when we think about the best ways that it's being used, we the protein folding, the just thinking outside of the box while also with more context than one human can have at, at a given time. Mm -hmm. Think about how it can be used for troubleshooting, problem solving. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, AI is working on the graphene battery problem that we have. That right. We can finally- Maybe we can solve it. We can solve yeah. it. And then batteries can be so much smaller. Uh, the fact that we're running up against the miniaturization of uh, processors that, well, AI maybe would be able to solve that with the knowledge that we have and the stuff that we don't have. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a book called Scythe and it's kind of a, it's a YA book, but the uh, the big concept in it is that the AI reached a level that it basically it, it supplanted all government because it it was it needed to like the humanity decided that it should because it knew everything that needed to be known so it knew how to solve world hunger it knew how to bring about peace it knew how to do all of these things and then it also made it so that humans could live forever uh, with you know all the proper DNA stuff and the book is about this group of humans that have to go around and actually remove people from life because humans never die so they get to choose who dies but that's not the point that I'm getting at I'm getting at the the point of this AI that yeah it does all of that generation it figures out how to properly build a building that doesn't fall in an earthquake I mean mm -hmm. just thinking about that aspect of it is a pretty cool thing mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. It could go both ways. Yeah, it could, <laughs> they could be cutting us down at the age of 30, like Logan's Run, or they could make sure bridges don't collapse anymore. There's, it's interesting. You still do an Android Faithful? Yeah, yeah, do an That's Android nice. Faithful every Tuesday. When, when yeah, we so canceled Tuesday all about at Android? A, at 5 o'clock for well, the last busy, busy 14 day. years yeah, of my life. That's awesome. So there's a story that you probably covered. Google is combining Android and hardware teams. Yeah. Yeah, Google's doing its thing again, restructuring. Um, we, I love Rick Osterlo, and he's yeah. been in charge of hardware for some time. At yeah, Google. he's been Came there since like 2016 yeah. or something. Yeah. Hiroshi Lockheimer no longer in the Android team. Oh. Oh, Rick that's is, a surprise. Um, he's moving on to other areas of Google um, and Alphabet. But yeah, Rick Osterlo kind of creating a new uh, department, platforms and devices. The whole idea being, I think it's a, I think it's a good good reason to do this that you know google as users of google we've seen how splintered their efforts can be five you know different <laughs> solutions for the same problem in different places right hand not talking to the left hand that sort of stuff and i think the idea here is that we bring the platforms and the devices into the same uh, division because they're all working with AI and all trying to solve similar problems so let's get the, these teams united and on the same page whether that's going to actually work. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of faith <laughs> in Google when, when we talk about these things because I think they sad, have a, a lot to overcome as far as mm -hmm. proving yeah. the, this sort of uh, strategy to be effective. But And uh, I think I it's going to cause an issue with the Android licensees like Samsung mm. because mm. now you've got the guy in charge of Pixel also running Android. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and That's problematic. If I were Samsung, I'd be screaming bloody murder. Mm. Yeah, I don't that's know how, point. yeah, what the, what they're, how close they are to, you know, the this happening and kind of if they've been involved in any of that for Google to 
kind of set them at ease as far as this is concerned. Right. If you read the re the uh, the interview that, that The Verge posted, I mean, r both Hiroshi and Rick come back really hard and fast mm -hmm. to basically say, oh, no, actually, there still will not be, you know, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, really, <laughs> really Good. reassuring. Right. Yeah. That, that, and so they were obviously prepared and ready for that perspective. Yeah. Sam, but, they um, did yeah. something, because Samsung, remember, was pulling away from Android. Mm. There was a Samsung Sam, event not yeah. so long ago where they didn't even mention Android when they announced their Yeah, new I don't phones. even know that they really do mention Android. They do now, and do it was noticeable when they stopped, and it was noticeable when they started again. Yeah, no, I remember and I feel stopped. like maybe Google did something to reassure them that uh, well, now you don't Google, have to develop Tizen, you don't have to develop mm, your own thing, yeah. keep using Android. We promise... We won't miss. We won't well, screw now they're with working you. closer together than I think they yeah. ever have. You yeah. know, so a lot of their efforts are, are joined up. They they have the recent uh, rebranding of Nearby Share to Quick Share, which was a Samsung feature mm -hmm. that they now you know have That's kind right. of integrated into Android. There's That's a lot right. of collaboration between them. Um, so, but yeah, it's a, it's a good point. I, I don't know how much of this, you know, how far this type of news will go in. You know, influencing or impacting the OEMs that work with Android. You know, if they're going to feel like and we need Android, we need Android to succeed. It can't be an all iPhone exactly world, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we we need at least a, a second choice, if no. not, yeah. if not more. <laughs> well, I mean, everywhere outside of the U.S., Android is is it's purely huge. dominant. Sure, so it's fact, not going this anywhere. year. Apple, for the first time in a long time, dropped in uh, iPhone uh, mm -hmm. penetration mm -hmm. by like nine percent. Yeah. Year Samsung's over year. the top spot. Yeah, yeah. Samsung's number one. Yeah. Well, Apple, and Apple was only in the top spot for a very short yeah. period of time. Well, that's true. It was like yeah. one quarter, and the, yeah. prior to that, it had been okay, Samsung for years. <laughs> Speaking of which, Wall Street Journal article today saying schools want to ban phones, parents aren't happy. Oh, no. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Student phone use is disruptive, the journal says, but teachers, administrators seeking a, a fix face an unlikely opponent. See, parents are really tied to the idea of keeping an eye on their kids at all times. <laughs> yeah. They talk I, about a school district in Colorado it. where teachers and administrators settled on a compromise for the 2022-2023 school year. Students could keep their phones, provided they were out of sight. To reach their parents, they needed a teacher's permission and had to go to the office to use the phone. And if the student violated those rules, the phone was confiscated and the parent needed to come and pick it up. Now, those all seem reasonable. Parents, apparently, <laughs> revolted. <laughs> In fact, several parents transferred their kids out of the wow. school district because parents want to use the phone to keep an eye on their kids. They want to be able to talk to their kids or text their kids and be in touch at all times. Oh, come on. Tell me about... <laughs> yeah, I needed... Because cool. earlier, I didn't... Uh, I. I want to know what you think, Jason. You yeah, have you've kids got kids that that are at, at this age. This yeah, age. yeah. So how does it work for you? Well, so my do my older daughter is uh, fourteen, and she has a phone, and yeah, she she takes it with her to school. It gets sacked away while she's in class. What does that mean, um, by the way? Like she just puts she, it away, or do they have those bags no, that? Oh, that's a good question. Here's I what they're doing that in. She uh, has to hand it over. I could be wrong. This in is there, in a private all boys school near San Francisco. They've got these little racks. Yeah, I'd have to look into that and, and see if there's actually a copy. I've never asked because it's never been an issue for her. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if I need to send my daughter a text message while she's at school, I fully know that I'm not going to hear back until the end of school. If I really need to reach her, I call the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and That's I'm what fine my that. mom did if she needed to get in touch was mm -hmm. call the office. I do. But also my daughter has an Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, on the, on like at recess or at break mm -hmm. or whatever... She, if, if I sent her a message, she will see it on her wrist. Mm -hmm. And if it's really important, then she'll go to the office and call. You know? one, so, uh, it works for me. The journal qu quotes one uh, former teacher saying, we should be, te and I agree with this, we should be teaching kids how to use cell phones responsibly. 100%. Not banning them. Because mm -hmm. then you don't, you don't learn. Same thing. Yeah, that's you, true. You don't learn. You don't yeah. learn how to handle them. Yeah. Although... Uh, uh, Although the age also kind of comes into play. Mm -hmm. If, if <clears throat> your parents are sending their, their fourth grader to school yeah. with a phone... Mm -hmm. You know, teaching them how to have good phone manners. I mean, you're going to get so far yeah. versus, you know, six, seven, eight. I want to play thing. Bubble Blast. <laughs> yeah. Common Sense Media study says a quarter of notifications hitting teens' phones every day come during school hours. 
and teens are using smartphones for a median of 43 minutes during the school day. But how much of their day is at school? It's Isn't it like chunk, a quarter? It's a huge of, chunk of your day. At least a quarter, yeah. right? Of your day. So I, I'm just saying. Do you want to let kids use social media while they're at school? No, no, no. I'm saying of of course, course the there's going to be, lean, yeah. yeah, they're going to lean towards a lot of use at school because if they're using their phones during the day, a lot of that is going to happen at school. That's yeah. all I'm saying. But yeah. I understand. Yeah. Ultimately, it would be great if they paid attention instead of being mm -hmm. on their phones. And uh, I remember Georgia Dow, uh, friend of the show, mm -hmm. uh, and talked about how delayed gratification is a skill that we as a society, we I don't guess, teach, do, do we? not do a very good job no, of teaching. We teach you get that thing get that, now. Yeah. yeah. Get and that dopamine hit now. And that's why the banning would not be as good as teaching that mm -hmm. delayed gratification, saying, yes, you may want to look at it now, but make the choice not to. Mm -hmm. And it ends up playing into your reward system if you sure. don't delay gratification. So Dave Chappelle, when he does yeah. comedy shows, Hand, it gets everybody comes in, hands them these yonder pouches, and you have to mm. stick your phone in this Faraday bag and and lock it up because mm. he doesn't. I understand he doesn't want people recording his bits and then stealing his jokes. Mm -hmm. A lot of comics do this now, uh, and schools are starting to use these yonder pouches in school. So, wow. Yeah, I, I was going to say also with Dave Chappelle, he says a lot of terrible things. So he probably doesn't want people <laughs> doesn't want anybody to know. Yeah, here. but yeah, I've seen those Faraday bags before. Mm -hmm. um, where do you stand? Because I understand this way. The key, this way, you don't. So you could leave it at the front door, but I, I'm, I feel at a comedy venue, you're not. You don't want to leave your phone at the front door. Yeah. And students probably feel weird if you take their phone, but they put it in the pouch and they carry it with them. I understand the safety concern, mm -hmm. I, especially with with school shootings, school shootings and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if something happens during the school day? Mm -hmm. If you're able to get in touch with your stu your child at that time wanting that I think it was um it was it was a previous contributor who had talked about their daughter having an Apple watch for that specific purpose and I think would have been one of the people in this one of the parents in this if that was the case but yeah I don't know uh I feel for the teachers I guess yeah I do yeah. too because it I is too. tough it's... dealing you're not only trying to do what you feel is right as an education professional hopefully they're you know trying to do what's right but you then have the fight that's directly in front of you and the fight with the parents at the same time and mm -hmm. that's not easy mm -hmm. there's a fort wayne school district that's suing meta and uh, other social media uh entities saying uh you're damaging our kids and they say if we win the lawsuit we're going to use it to buy these yonder bags which is going to cost us <laughs> district-wide four hundred thousand wow. dollars so then we'll buy the bags and everything will be solved i don't think they're going to win that lawsuit i hate to tell them. yeah i don't think so Prince, this has been a very nice way to spend our 19th anniversary i see burke was able to light up the sign for the site thank you burke that is from this this very set where soledad o'brien would talk to me in that virtual reality outfit uh, and was given to me by David Borman, the executive producer of the show. He said, I, I don't want it. You want it? <laughs> it was like $50,000 to make it. But <laughs> oh my God. And, and what? Actually, Are you serious? It was very expensive because it had custom uh, bent fluorescent lighting around the rim to yeah. light up the text and they had it be custom engraved. Uh, and it's glass. Yeah. Uh, wow. But the fluorescent bulbs had broken. So Burke actually took it apart, put in LEDs. He got it. He He's got a it magician. working. The <laughs> only thing we're reluctant to do is is uh, what we did at the uh, old site studio, which is hang it from the ceiling. Because <laughs> I'm really if it afraid. Doesn't stay. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. sad story. Oh. He was a virtual character on the site, then died in 2024 when the sign <laughs> clobbered him <laughs> from above. Yeah, that would not be good. Yeah, because who knows if those? It's pretty heavy. Those, I don't yeah. think those hooks are, uh, are still in there. Yeah. yeah. So we're just gonna leave it there. If that's all right. Hey, thank you so much, Jason Howell. You're doing great. AI Insider. AI, uh, AI Inside. Inside. There is an no insider, R. But, but that's not AI much. Inside. Yeah. And uh, Android Faithful. Android Faithful. On Relay FM, yes or no? Uh, no, that's DTNS. DTNS, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Android Inside, um, AI Inside independent or is it? Yeah, AI Inside is is my, not DTNS. my podcast with, uh, Tom's network. with the Jeff Jarvis. Nice. Yes. No, independent. And Techsploder, Techsploder. YouTube.com at Tech 
Sploder. Yep. Or you could just, actually, you can also go to techsploder.com that has all of the, the ways to subscribe and, oh, nice. you know, has the videos and has episode zero, which is up now. It's, it's searchable in the podcast thing as of this morning. Nice. I was up until like two o'clock last night, like, Yay. gotta get this into place before tomorrow. I'm so glad, Jason. So, That's so congrats great. Congrats on the launch. Yes. And subscribe and join and, and participate yeah, on I'm, Patreon I'm as well. really excited. And I, yeah. by the way, I will be reaching out to all of you for this show because really what it's going to be is it's not like a news show. It's really about our kind of collective love for technology oh, and how nice. technology intertwines with the human experience in our lives. I already me, said you know, tech for you. What <laughs> more do you want? I know, exactly. Did, did I drive the point home with the tech? Tech, 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 tech. Yeah. That's so, wonderful. Congratulations. So I'll be reaching out So to you glad guys. to see you doing well. Thank you. It was also great to see Aunt Pruitt here. He took a lot of pictures. And where is he going to post those pictures? Do I've already know? seen some of them some? on X, formerly known as Twitter. Yeah, some in the Discord, some... Some of the Discord, some are X. Yep. Some great shots. Thank you, Ant. Thank you, Abrar Alhidi. You'll see Abrar on CNET, where she's a tech reporter. So nice to meet you in person. Likewise. Have you in studio? Long overdue, and again, I'm so honored to have been invited and to, to well, stay here with you Well, you weren't even born when we started this show, so it's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm actually 13 years old. Um, <laughs> You're doing really well. <laughs> yeah, very, very mature. Technology reporter. Do your mommy and daddy let you bring your phone yeah. when you do no, the podcast? No, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's great to see you. Thank you so much Thank you for, for having coming me. up. We really My pleasure. It. Yeah. It's been a, a, so much much fun. And of course, you can catch a bra uh, every month, too, on uh, Tech News Weekly with yes. this cat right here, Micah Sargent. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually more like a wiener dog, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, he is uh, also the host of in the, what's it called? Ask iOS the Tech. Today, oh, yeah. Ask the Tech Guys, Ask Hands tech. on Mac. Yeah, those things. <laughs> Several yeah, things. Just head to chihuahua.coffee, C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee. That's where I've got links to the places I'm most active on. You know, there's a restaurant in Terminal 1 at uh, San Francisco Airport called the, Ch what's it called? Chihuahua Zone? It's Chihuahua something. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to go there. Yeah, you yeah had, next time you get in an airplane, you have to. <laughs> I hope it's not a Boeing. Chihuahua <laughs> land. Yeah. What's the name of it? I can't read. Something with Chihuahua. Some involving chihuahuas. <laughs> well, okay. And, oh my God, thank you all for being here. Yeah. It's so nice to have a live studio audience. So well-groomed and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> very, very polite. Uh, no, it's really great to have you all from all over the uh, country. Actually, from Canada, too. Um, we really appreciate your coming down. Thank you for being in Club Twit. And thank you for participating. We're going to adjourn to a local uh, brew Brew pub to uh, uh, where are we going? Lagunitas. Yes. Lagunitas. If you want to join us for a no host celebration of our 19th anniversary, uh, we will be back next uh, week as we begin our 20th year of, uh, of Twit, which is kind of amazing. Wow. 20 years. 20 years. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. So we thank you all for being here. We thanks our thank, deepest thanks to our Club Twit members. Mm -hmm who make this all possible, to our executive producer, the talented Lisa Laporte, who is sitting right there. Thank you, Lisa, our CEO. To John Slanina, our studio manager. Benito Gonzalez, our technical director and editor. Uh, Burke McQuinn, who keeps things working and made the sign work, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And to, our, uh, to Sebastian and Debbie and Continuity, our big Continuity team. And, everybody at the twit family we we are very happy we're all very happy to have you in the family thank you for your support all these years and as i have said for 19 years and soon we'll be saying in our 20th year that's it for tech twit thank you for joining us we'll see you next time another twit is in the can bye-bye